on Comcast Sportsnet, part of the NBC Sports Group. Home is where the walk-off is. Tonight, the green and gold return to Oakland and open up a 10-game homestand in the middle of a pennant race. First up, the Tampa Bay Rays. Joe Madden once again has his team believing that they, too, can surge toward the postseason. Their stellar pitching and speedy offense have made them a tough team to beat over the past few seasons. But the A's will have something to say as they have become the best story in baseball. Their 11 walk-off wins make them must-see TV. So sit back and relax, watch the game, and stay for the pod. Game one is next. Two road trip to the East Coast. These are back home and they are glad to be back at the Coliseum. Johnny Gomes and the Athletics have won eight out of their last ten and they host the Rays. Tough task tonight for Athletics. David Price, the all star left hander, will pitch for the Rays and that young man, A.J. Griffin, for the Athletics. It's game one of the three game series, A's Rays, coming up on Comcast Sportsnet California. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball. Along with Ray Fossey, I'm Glenn Kuyper. Well, it is going to be an exciting 10 game homestand. You want to play teams that you're not necessarily chasing, but because the A's are on top in that wild card standings. But hey, you're going to play the teams that are chasing you, and that's good. Well, it happened this past week. The A's did quite well on the road against the Blue Jays and the Orioles. They come back tonight to their favorite place, the Coliseum, and this is who they're going to be facing. The Rays for three, and then the Blue Jays come back for four. They just saw them, but the Angels series should be a great one. They're right now in Arlington, Texas. They're leading in the first game. That's a big four-game series before they come here. So a lot of fun right now coming to the park just because so many great things can happen. Well, there's your wild card standings. The A's on top by a half a game over the Angels. Remember, the top two wild card teams make it. And as Ray said, the Angels are beating up on the Rangers right now in the eighth inning. And there you see the Rays just two back of that second wild card spot. So it's tight, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Now the Rays, you saw David Price. You could make an argument he's been the best pitcher in the American League this year. He's trying to become the Major League's first 15-game winner. 14 wins, the only loss the A's had in Tampa against this team came when David Price was on the mound. He struck out 12 in that game. He has a great fastball, two and a four seamer. He'll throw a cut fastball. He throws a curveball, a slider, a change. He's got everything. He throws hard. He's very confident, young left-hander, and he's one guy the A's would like to beat in the first game of the series because they know this is going to be a very tough team to play. So the Rays have good pitching. The A's have very good pitching, and they're going to send a very good youngster to the mound tonight. A.J. Griffin. Griffin will be looking for his four fourth consecutive win. So pennant race baseball at the Coliseum. It's the A's and the Rays. We'll have lineups and first pitch when we come back.
of Sportsnet California is brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And by Toyota. Check out the great deals at your local Toyota dealer today. Back at the Coliseum for the A's and the Rays. Game one of the three-game series. And just as we get back, the A's take the field in the all-white uniforms tonight. It'll be A.J. Griffin on the mound. And it's going to be a beautiful night for baseball here in the East Bay. Game time weather brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission-free boardwalk is open daily. 72 degrees, a warm day all around the Bay Area. So it's going to be a beautiful night for baseball as the A's are back home to start a 10-game homestand. And it's an important homestand. Starts with these Tampa Bay Rays. Amazing this time of the year how look at the series but every game so important and it's nice to be thinking about every game being important and that's what happens that has happened for the athletics in this month of July here's the Rays lineup Desmond Jennings starts out in left field and then BJ Upton in center switch hitter Ben Zobrist at second Jeff Kepinger is the DH Matt Joyce and right Ryan Roberts newly acquired Ryan Roberts at third Carlos Pena at first Jose Molina is the catcher and Sean Rodriguez is the shortstop it is A.J. Griffin starting this series as he did against the Minnesota Twins at target field. The A's with A.J. starting, three rookies, and got the series off to a good start. He hopes to do the same tonight against these Tampa Bay Rays. Facing them for the first time, but six consecutive quality starts for the young right-hander. He's pitched at least six innings in each of those, as the numbers tell. But the Rays looking at some video, and Greg Shelton, their hitting coach, said, how does he do it? How does he throw that curveball? I said, wait till you see it thrown very hard but it's thrown and comes to the plate very slowly. Athletics defense for tonight. It's Smith and left Cespedes in center Reddick and right engine Hicks on the left side weeks and Carter on the right side and Kurt Suzuki is the catcher. So you got the lineups you got the starting pitcher you got the defense and that means we are set to go as Desmond Jennings steps in. And this homestand is just about set to get started. A.J. Griffin kicks, and the first pitch of the ball game is a fastball. Strike call to Jennings, so we're underway. A lot of speed at the top of the order for Joe Mann with Desmond Jennings, then B.J. up and right behind him. Strike two call. Angel Hernandez Whoa, likes the high strike. <laughs> he likes the high strike. There is. The Silver Fox asked Joe, I said, what about your hair? He said, it's not going to change colors anymore. It's going to stay the silver white. Inge juggles, and that's going to be an error. So the speedy mm. Jennings is aboard on an E5. Well, such an easy play after two very good fast balls. He did flip the slow curve. Brandon Inge had it. Came up. Stayed down, kicked off his Number knee, two, couldn't handle it. And now, even Upton. if he bobbles it there and comes up with it cleanly, probably can throw out Jennings because he has a very strong arm. But after three strikes. And that one's lined toward Reddick, who's in the sunshine. So B.J. Upton swinging at the first pitch, hit it on a line, but he's retired. It's a good play by Josh Reddick, considering. The sun right the there, and it's going to stay there gradually. We hope by the time he goes back out in the second inning, there will be no more sun. There's the umpires with the crew chief, Angel Hernandez, calling balls and strikes. So with one out, Ben Zobra steps in. The Rays coming in 53 and 49. And they just finished up a series in Anaheim where they took two out of three. Did not give up much offensively to the Angels. I think the Angels got a little upset after that series because of what they're doing in the pounding down in Arlington. Yeah, that big series in Arlington starting tonight, and it's all Angels. They are leading 15 to 7 over the Rangers, and that game in the bottom of the ninth inning, so that should be over soon. Cap, I looked on the out of town scoreboard earlier and I saw a 3 to nothing Rangers, then they dropped a three spot for the Angels, and all Angels from yeah. that point. So. And I guess uh, when Kendry's Morales has had a big night. Yes, he has. There's David Price, the tall lefty pitching for the Rays. 
Well, this is Zobris. The 0-2 pitch is close, but a bit outside. Zobris hitting 247, 12 home runs, 41 runs batted in. So the Rays are on a nine-game road trip. This is the final stop for them. They're four and two on the trip. So they're looking forward to heading home. Good block by Kurt Suzuki, and that's important, even though we talk about runners on the bases, but runner at third, you block a ball, that's great. But a runner at first, you keep him out of scoring position, and Kurt Suzuki really pounced on it quickly after having it bounce off his chest protector. Keep the double play in order as much as possible, and that's what a good block by catcher will do. Jennings, terrific base dealer, 18 for 19. And that's a foul tip in and out of the glove of Suzuki. That's the new guy, George Kataris. Acquired from the Brewers yesterday. He's a left handed hitting catcher. So George Kataris is now in the green and gold. Sitting next to Brandon Moss, with, of course, together with the Red Sox, familiarity. And that's a swing by Ben Zobris, and that's the second out. Great changeup. So Derek Norris is optioned to AAA Sacramento. Norris had some big hits for the A's, of course, the walk off against the Giants, but also struggled at times offensively. Derek will go back to Triple A. Has to stay at least 10 days. Once your option, you have to stay at least 10 unless there's another injury to a position player and especially a catcher. But he will be back. He'll spend a lot of time in the big leagues. And when he comes back, you'll probably see the full beard and the full head of hair. <laughs> the way he came up. So two outs for Jeff Keppinger, who's the designated hitter. You're a hot hitter right now. One of the reasons why he's in that cleanup spot. And this one's popped up. Going out is the shortstop Hicks, still backpedaling. He's got it side retired. So a leadoff base runner on the air, but nothing else for the race. David Price set to go to work. No score after a half an inning. Here in the bottom of the first, and let's take a look at their starting lineup tonight. Coco Chris still out, so Jamal Weeks will be in the leadoff spot. Then Gomes, Reddick, Cespedes, Carter, in Suzuki, Smith, and Hicks. And it is the left-hander, 14-game winner for the Tampa Bay Rays. As I mentioned, one of the wins coming against the A's back in. May, but the only trip the A's made, but he has a lot of pitches to throw at the hitters, including a very, very good fastball, low 90s. One of the best left handers in the American League. 
playing behind David Price tonight. Good outfield. Jennings, Upton, and Joyce. And Roberts, Rodriguez, Zobrist, and Pena around the infield with Jose Molina doing the catching. And a lot of catching for Jose. Getting a lot of work. So Jamal Weeks steps in, hitting from the right side. He's actually, average wise, been a better hitter this year from the right side. 242. And from the left side, just 211. A decent road trip for Weeks, 7 for 23. First pitch is a fastball right on the outside corner for a strike. Very easy, 94 miles per hour, too. He's he's pretty good. Great pitcher for Joe Madden to start a series. He is, of course, very confident with A.J. Griffin. A good top to first. And 95 with a little late movement, and it's 0 2. Well, just right there, and yesterday, the A's face a very tough left hander. And Chan of the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah. A fastball that helped him strike out a career best. Wasn't throwing quite as hard as Price no. is, though. That's Chili Davis about that. Is is into the game, and he said something about the wrist by Wei Yan Chan. That his hitters, if it's just kind of a late movement, just from the wrist. Interesting. And it was kind of a four seam, so the A's probably will face him when he comes back out and see how much better they are prepared after facing him twice in Baltimore. He was good yesterday. Most ever by the Taiwanese pitcher. High fastball and weak swings and misses. So that's one out here in the bottom of the first inning. And they stay with the fastball. The A's very familiar with lefties as they faced five on the road trip and one before they left. And CC Sabathia, now David Price tonight. And they'll face three more against the Blue Jays, the same three they faced in Toronto. Price so far as you see his pitches and he will throw the fastball averaging about 95 miles per hour. And when you have that kind of fastball. Why change? So it's the cutter off the heater. What's well, interesting reading about David Price how they talked about. He's throwing his fastball. Less this year. But. He's never thrown a cutter before till this year, and it's been such a great pitch. He's using that now, pitch he never had before, and throwing the straight fastball less. It's obviously working. Jim Hickey, the pitching coach. Joe Man, and there's Raymond, of course. Raymond is always finding a way to get the picture, but we would not expect anything other from him. O2 pitch and breaking ball that bounces away from Molina. He picks it up, throws to first, and Johnny Gomes is retired for out number two. Actually, the A's had a lead against David Price. It's Kurt Suzuki had a two out single. He did most of this after he gave, gave up the single at the double for a run. He just set down 12 A's, 12 strikeouts. Came in eight innings, and the A's, of Pennington hit a home run in the ninth inning. You can see Cliff at the park today and getting some work in, starting to feel better. That was the line for David Price, just the one earned run. Rays, unfortunately, after the A's did score, they ended up scoring seven in the next two innings. First pitch to Reddick is a strike. 270, 22 homers, 50 RBIs for Reddick. Final now out in Arlington. The Angels beat the Rangers 15 to 8. We'll give you some of the goodies on that game a little bit later on during our game. Angels came out swinging. Strike with a fastball 97 miles an hour. And just a good fastball this time of night. Good pitchers will hit the fastball and with a high strike zone by Angel Hernandez or the strike zone in general for Angel Hernandez. Pretty uh, pitcher friendly. So 
Reddick probably swung at that because the pitch right before that was called a strike. He fouls it back. He's had a lot of success against lefties this year, but that was just a protecting swing. Does she protect? What a nice swing. Price would provide the power. He might hit a home yeah, run off sure. a 95 mile an hour fastball. And he hits that one high right center field. Upton and Joyce come together and Upton is there. Side retired. Three up, three down inning with a couple of strikeouts for David Price. No score after one. After the A's play the Indians, fans will, with a special pre purchased tickets, will be invited to watch Moneyball. Field level tickets that include the screening are available for $40. If you already have tickets to the game, movie tickets are available for $12. A portion of the proceeds will benefit Cystic Fibrosis Research support and resources. For tickets, go to OaklandAthletics.com slash Moneyball. One way to beat a good pitcher, and we have talked about this kind when A's have faced outstanding starting pitchers. You beat them by not allowing any runs. Sure. And we've seen Bartolo Colon do that against Felix Hernandez, and A's are facing one of the best in David Price tonight. Matt Joyce pops one up, left side of the diamond with the shift on. Brandon Ian has it, and that's out number one. And I think one of the things that a pitcher, and I don't think there's any pitcher in the A staff has any more confidence than A.J. Griffin. And he takes the mound. And it's his time to pitch. He doesn't care who he's facing. He knows he's facing the opposition's hitters. This guy just couldn't wait to get it in the American League, could he? After having a walk off against the A's in Arizona. Well, he had a home run in his yep. first at bat with the Rays, but he hasn't had a hit since. But all in all, we were kind of surprised that the Diamondbacks let him go. Seems like a pretty good play. Last year, Roberts had 19 home runs and 65 runs batted in and 25 doubles for Arizona. Of course, that was a big year for the Diamondbacks. Overhand curve floats outside. One and two. Carlos Pena will be next. Ball a little bit up and in. If a pitcher can pitch up in the zone, most like to pitch down in the zone, but with Angel Hernandez strike zone tonight for AJ Griffin, it be best served if he kept it up in the strike zone upstairs. On the ground toward the shortstop picks. So that's out number two. 
don't really want to show this, but almost have to because that was a devastating blow. That was after Josh Willingham, similar blow in Minneapolis. But that was the excitement at Chase Field, Arizona. It's not a very good weekend either. I mean, it was. It's was hot. Well, that was one of those walk offs where it happened so fast yeah. because he's got the first two outs. And then got ahead of Roberts after a couple guys got on. You're never completely ready for a walk off by the other team, but that one it seemed like it snuck up on you before you knew it. Wow, the game's over. Carlos Pena, one of the good guys, former athletic, got him from the Texas Rangers. Well, he found a home with the Tampa Bay Rays. He, he's using a shift. With Carlos, but one of the things that Joe Madden said really helped Carlos Pena when he first got him was how well he hit the ball to the opposite field. It's a little tougher, it seems now for him because he seems to hit a lot of balls into the shift. Three guys to the right, on the right side. Great first baseman defensively. Having a little bit of a tough time this year getting on track. He's never been a guy that hits for a real high average, but he's always been. Big home run hitter this year, 14 home runs, but just a 194 average. So I'm sure the Rays are thinking, listen, we're in this thing. And maybe Carlos Pena has a good two month stretch in him, which he is the kind of guy that can get hot. As I mentioned earlier, when a manager says, we have not been hot yet, that says a lot about a team that they know they're capable of going on. Change up. It is a good changeup. Pena strikes out. A couple of strikeouts in the game for Griffin. We're headed to the bottom of the second. Suspidus is going to lead it off. Insurance report card highest average fastball velocity in 2012. Price just a couple of ticks under Steven Strasburg, and we saw that in the very first inning. But I would venture to say David Price will not be shut down in the early part of September. <laughs> Too many innings as projected by. It's not going to go over well. No, as <laughs> Washington Nationals are expected to do that with their star right hander. I mean, can you imagine David Price first joining the ball club and going right into postseason? He did. I mean, yeah. that was something else to to have that kind of success, go right to postseason and close out games. And that was the World Series year yes, for the Rays. Yeah. The Phillies were world champions, but the Rays came out of nowhere, which they always seem to do in September. 
Cespedes. Big chopper toward third. Waiting on it is Roberts. He guns it across, and it's not in time. So Cespedes showing off that great speed, and once Roberts had to kind of wait for that last hop, you knew there was a chance that Cespedes was going to beat it out. Yeah, it was a tough play because there's not much Roberts could do except this. Just wait and then use a strong arm. He did, and it was bang, bang. And Cespedes doing what runners should do, kind of not jump at the bag, which he did, but it's kind of a shorter jump. He did not get too airborne. But he has tremendous speed. Don't look back. Just look at the bag and just think if he hadn't looked back twice towards third base, he might have been back by the bag 10 feet. Roberts has a very strong arm. So leadoff single, and here's Carter. Robert set up perfectly and used the strong arm, and I think he thought he got him, and he might have very close, but it was bang bang. Ty Water helping Ed Hickox. Well, I guess we should remind fans that there is one player named Evan Ongoria. Who is on the disabled list with a hamstring problem? He is rehabbing and should be back relatively soon, but he is their all star third baseman. And he has been out for a long time since early May. Well, that's another reason why the Rays are in this thing and they feel like they got a, as right. good a chance as anybody. Talk about a major acquisition yeah, when their right. all star third baseman comes back. And Joe Madden knows that. that They've used different third basemen, of course, acquiring Roberts to help fill in. In the absence, I didn't think he's going to be out that long, but hamstring injuries are very tough. It's it was a torn yeah. hamstring too, which doesn't help it. This is how it happened, and this was April 30th. And it looks it looks fairly harmless, yeah. but right there, he got it before he even got to yeah. the bag. He, could see him start to right oh, yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. So again, April 30th. So he has missed 79 games. And as we all know, that's one of the best players in the American League. Yes. And they're also without Luke Scott, yeah. pretty good offensive player. DH again. Yeah, he was. They uh, feel like you get yep, those guys exactly. in there. He was encouraged and you know he played with a hamstring injury. Yeah. He said he had about five games that he kind of got through the hamstring injury, but it had an oblique. And he started taking batting practice today, hitting off a tee, so he's he's hopeful of coming back. That's two big bats out of the lineup. Two and two to Carter. And there's a shot fair ball headed for the left field corner. Digging it out is Jennings and Cespedes is digging for third. And digging for home, and he will score with a slide. One nothing, Athletics. And Kai, if you talked about the cut fastball, guess what? Chris Carter just dropped the head of the bat on a cutter, 90 miles an hour. But fastballs, he kept fouling back, and there's a cutter and big Chris Carter, very short stride. Tomahawk just dropped the head, unbelievably quick. And the unassessment, we saw him go. Home to third Saturday night. How about this scoring? And once Jennings bobbled the ball, Mike Diego, he was going to send it and easily made it home. And when you're facing David Price, you take all the chances you can to try to score runs. Couldn't ask for a better guy coaching third than Mike Diego to do that. But to cut fastball, he's throwing 95 96 with a fastball, dropped the cutter at 90. That was just enough for Chris Carter to pull it. So here's Inge. So RBI number 17 for Carter. It's the Rays pitching. It's been very good. In fact, the Athletics lead the American League in Team ERA at 3.44. The Rays are second at 3.57. So, you're seeing the two best pitching staffs ERA-wise in the American League. And all the, although the A's have been scoring a lot of runs, especially in this month, the Rays typically have not been yeah. getting a lot of offensive support. Rookie pitchers. 
So Jared Parker, and there's tonight's starter. Brandon is trying to do something. It's, it's very hard to do with a mid 90s fastball trying to hit the ball to the right side, but he stayed inside that last one. See the right side of the infield. Carlos Pena way off the, the line at first base. But watch the inside out swing. Excellent approach by Brandon Edge trying to hit the ball to the right side to advance Chris Carter. Nobody's holding Carter a second, so he could get a bigger lead if a ball is hit on the ground to the right side. You ever see a runner second? Nobody's holding close with nobody out. Leaving him alone. Get way yeah. off. Zobris way off the back. Shortstop Rodriguez is playing ends to pull. He could go halfway to third. Yep. He could walk to third and steal it. 0 2 pitch. Strike three called. So that's the third strikeout for Price. So one out here is our Cash Creek playing the numbers. Interesting. Difference between that last year and this year for Chris Carter on fastball. Huh. Well, that, I mean, listen, that pretty much says it all right there. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. there's nothing else to, to really talk about. I mean, you hit the fastball like that. Did you see the numbers for inside fastball? <laughs> fastballs, but inside fastballs, that's how quick he is. You can turn on it. Here's Kurt Suzuki. Suzuki shoots one foul. And he scored 48 runs in the six games on that road trip. And remember yesterday they only scored one. Yeah. So a lot of damage done offensively. No one one to Suzuki hitting 213. And he rips one right center field. Joyce on the move. He's not going to get it. Up against the wall. Carter scores easily, and the A's lead two to nothing. Kurt Suzuki saw the numbers at the bottom. One for eight, make it now two for nine. Both RBI doubles. He pulled one to left field. And St. Pete, this one to right center field. Matt Joyce Reach could not get it. Great hitting. Kurt Suzuki. Wow, that was great stroke. And Chris Carter, once he saw the ball land, was safely able to score easily. But what a difference for Kurt Suzuki, especially swinging the way he is. The damaged left hand, you can see now, and he's talked about the last couple of weeks how much better he's feeling, and swings like that. And he knows exactly what he's talking about. So here's Seth Smith who takes way outside. Two forty seven. Eleven home runs for Smith. So Smith. Getting a start against the left handed pitcher which. He did yesterday as well. Is a bit outside. Numbers since the break. Most runs in the American League. That's the Athletics. Most home runs. That's the Athletics. Best OPS. Best manager. <laughs> a lot of people saying already manager of the year. Just the end of July. Now, Seth Smith playing as he did yesterday, and Bob Melvin knows with Coco Crisp not able to play. He would be in the lineup. It would have been yesterday, would have been tonight. And with the lefties pitching, Johnny Gomes probably in the DH with Coco in center and Cespedes in left. Reddick in right. But that's the mix of matching that the A's were able to do with their veteran players. Missed again, three and one. That pitch is a strike in the first inning. But height not wise. in the second. Heights wise, just a question. Tommy Cam might have shown it off the plate a little bit, but still, you're right. It was strike. Just as long as he doesn't start calling the low strike, because that's one he hasn't called yet. Three one to Smith. And he pops it up. 
foul territory where Pena goes back and he's got it. Kurt Suzuki stays at second. So two outs here in the second. The A's with a couple of runs in. RBI doubles by Carter and Suzuki. Batting in the ninth position, shortstop, number 18, Brandon Hicks. So Brandon Hicks will have a chance to knock in another run. First major league home run right center against the Rangers two weeks ago this coming Wednesday and Kurt Suzuki just did the same thing to right center that might be the area in which he's going to try to hit against this hard throwing right hand try to pull him is a little harder unless he does try to throw a cutter or slider inside less velocity first pitch is fastball in the first try only 97. Yeah. Another fastball at 97. This one's a swing and a miss, so it's 0 2. So hard for a right hander with a fastball that hard to try to swing and make contact. Throw it outside, at least if you're a little bit late swinging, you might hit a, an opposite field line drive. And a swing and a miss. So a couple of strikeouts for Price, but the A's get two runs on three hits. A couple of RBI doubles. So we're headed to the third. The A's with a 2 0 lead over the Rays. Of the historic 20 game win streak. It's the weekend of August 18th and 19th. It's on August 18th. 15,000 fans receive a Scott Hatterberg bobblehead presented by Pepsi featuring three audio clips from Bill King's famous radio call. Then on the 19th, 10,000 fans get a There's an A in Streak t shirt courtesy of Cash Creek Casino Resort. For information and tickets, go to athletics.com. Jose Molina deleted off top of the third. Now the A's with a 2 0 lead. No different stance for Jose, but it's working for him. Except when he gets a real slow curveball. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> Look at this smile on his face. And you get Derek Shelton, the hitting coach for the Rays. He was in Cleveland now with Joe Madden. But he, he first thing he asked him about was a curveball thrown by AJ Griffin because they see it thrown so slowly. Like that. Like that. At 67. But if you throw it one with one finger, you can't get a lot behind it. And that's what he does. Look how violently he throws the ball and just floats up to the hitter. 
Number one. I mean, he's throwing it like he's going to throw it 100 miles an hour, and it goes nowhere. And the pitch selection between the fastball and the curveball. Why not? He, I tell you, he mixes his pitches so nicely. This change up is very good. Slider. Impressive thing about him since day one. Quickness in which he works, gets the ball and throws it. One and one to Sean Rodriguez. Rodriguez hitting 208, six home runs, 27 runs batted in. Really, a Rays offense that has been struggling, Ray. They're kind of an interesting offensive team. They're last in batting average in the American League, but first in walks, but second to the last in strikeouts, but first in stolen bases. <laughs> They're, they're a little all over the board. They always steal a lot of bases. I mean, that's not a huge surprise. They were first in steals last year in America, and first again this year. Tenth at home runs. So they walk a lot, strike out a lot, but the most important thing, run scored, they're 11th in the league. So it's not been a great offensive season for the Rays. Yeah, with the pitching they have. Well, you don't have to score a lot of them. That's runs. right. And if you can manufacture by getting over the walk, stealing the base. Jennings takes just a bit high. So 2 and 0 oh after the Rodriguez walk. After the first pitch strike to Rodriguez, now he's thrown six. And just seems what A.J. Griffin is doing is trying to rush too much and overthrowing the pitchers to where they're off the plate. Well, he's been good in his six starts this year. DJ Upton in the on deck circle. And that one's hit very high down the left field line, but it's well fouled deep into the lower level. That could have been a result, of course, the count being 2 and 0, oh, but also his first at bat, and what he saw two fastballs up in the zone from AJ Griffin, both called strikes. Then he flipped the slow curve that he was able to reach on the air. He throwing a fastball up in the zone, and the hitters know the umpire is going to call it. They're going to be swinging. I staff is seeing the, the strike zone, and I think a lot of hitters, as Chris Carter proved, to try to. Drop the head of the bat on a low pitch, but to go upstairs, hit a high fastball sometimes is easy, sometimes not. I guess you really have to be kind of looking for it, right? Or not necessarily a, the height of the pitch, but the type of pitch, right? Right, right. And, and if it's a high fastball to get on top yeah. of it, which a lot of times a hitter of any type of a, kind of an up, uppercut swing makes it tough. Kurt Suzuki coming back and Kurt's got just enough room to make the catch. So Jennings fouls out and that's out number two. See that kind of a foul ball down the line. But not so much behind home plate but Kurt Suzuki stayed with it went up high and then just started drifting no, back over near the A's on deck circle. Got rid of the mask got it out of the way and came back. Very good play. That's the one you have to stay with. And you see the ball coming back. He had to reach back a little bit to his right. Here's Upton. First pitch to Upton is outside. Upton hit a line drive right at Reddick. He's in the first inning. Big curve. Drops in first drive. One and one. Unless you have two strikes, I can't see a hitter being able to commit to swing at a curveball throwing this slowly. And see BJ start, buckled his knees just a little bit and floated right into the strike zone. And fastball just a touch low. Rodriguez at first, he had the one out walk. 
bluffs going and the pitch is way outside three and one. Zobris would be next. Griffin doesn't want it to get that close. That one's hit high to center field. Cespedes in a couple of steps. He's got it. Side retired. Runner stranded. We're going to the bottom of the third. It's 2 0 Athletics. To date, everything athletics with Casey Pratt. Follow Casey on Twitter at Casey Pratt CSN and log on to Ace Talk on CSNCalifornia.com all season long to read Casey's news and notes on the Oakland Athletics. Ace leading two to nothing. It's the bottom of the third inning. And he's well at the top of the order. So Week steps in. He struck out swinging in the first inning. Weeks, Gomes, and Reddick. He's got a pair of run scoring doubles by Carter and Suzuki in the second inning. One time through the batting order. Big Chris got the cut fastball. E.J. Griffin shutting them out for the three innings. The A's hitters one time through the order figured out what they can do. What is David Price doing? He is striking out batters four. He's given up a couple of big hits. And he's just trying to make an adjustment based on what a pitcher is doing. Thirty four pitches for Price through. Two innings in. A couple innings here. This one's ripped to center. Upton back. Upton makes the catch. So well hit ball by Weeks. Similar to the pitch that Upton got that he hit to make the last out last time. Top that. of the inning. But get a 3 1 fastball and you figure you're going to do right. some serious damage and hit it straight away center. And if you're a pitcher, and you challenge a hitter. You pitch him in such a way that he does try to hit it out in the deepest part of the park. Not easy to do. So here's Gomes. Johnny, one of the Rays' favorite players. Whenever he played for the Rays and for the fan favorites, it's that one in the hole. Rodriguez makes a nice play and throws out Gomes, who runs pretty well, and we've seen it. With the game in St. Pete, the A's winning two or three, including the big game by Johnny Gomes. Didn't start, but made a great play in left center, save a run, and then. 
against is Peralta hit a home run to win the game. Huh? Next extra innings. Pelican started the game for the Rays, but drafted by the Rays out of Petaluma. He was holding court down in the A's dugout. He can hold court with all the writers and Rays and cameras. Bob Melvin said, Johnny, you can do the manager show if you want. Just stay right there. <laughs> well, Johnny Gomes would be the kind of guy that would be be good to have like his own radio show because he'd be good. <laughs> well, he's a good student of the game. He, he's very knowledgeable of the game. Something that probably a lot of players can learn from. Something like Johnny. Hey, Cinco de Mayo. Here we go to left center. Johnny Gomes all the way out. Gets the wall, banging it down, and then came right back up and a home run to win it. The articles written by Johnny Gomes when the A's were down there, how everybody really enjoyed having Johnny on the team, understandably so, as the A's are right now to have Mr. Play hard all the time. He loves it when he knows he's going to play. And Bob Melvin lets him know the night before, and you can see him come out to the park early. He's got a bat in his hand, ready to go. The first week of May when the A's yeah. were down in St. Petersburg. Brandon Andrew just joined the club right. in Boston and hit the big home run on the Sunday game. Gets more. That was after Tommy Malone walked the yard and came up four runs in the first inning, but the A's came back. The A's will go back to St. Petersburg. 23rd, 24th, and 25th of August. Right around the Republican National Convention. Right there, <laughs> yeah. Reddick reaches for it, hits it into the A's dugout. The A's will have a very rare Thursday, Friday, Saturday series right. against the Rays Sunday off because they get Trump County Field prepared for a big function. Sunday off during the baseball season. That's very strange. Only thing better if it's during football season. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Which happened in Detroit a couple of years ago. You know what I'm thinking? Yes, I Reddick shoots one down the line, but it's just foul. Matt Moore, and this just hurts your ears. It sounded so loud. Three run home run, and he knew it. And it was. Long gone, hit hard, sounded loud. And that was a Sunday afternoon great comeback by the A's after being down four to nothing in the first inning. And that was just the beginning of the excitement from Brandon Inch coming back here and walk off Grand Slam. He's had two hit, two Grand Slams already for the A's. So a good battle here. Reddick hanging in there with the 0-2 count. To get a fly ball to center field to end the first inning. Long look in by Price. And that one hit off of Reddick's foot, so it'll be a foul ball. And Josh Reddick started 0 and 2. That's four fouls with two strikes. and. Straight down, he stopped right in his tracks as the ball went off his foot. If not, fake it. Because <laughs> <Well, shake laughs> you, know, you know you're out if you don't. Time. Just start yeah. jumping around. And you can't look at the baseball. You know, one time when all players wore black shoes and black polish, you'd see the spot on the baseball. He's wearing white shoes. You're not going to see any spot. <laughs> That's why they wear white <laughs> That's shoes. Why right? They wear the white shoes. Yeah. Just nothing's going to show up on the baseball. <laughs> Late Veda Penson used to polish his own shoes. I said, why do you do that? And he said, I hit a ball off my foot. They're going to see the polish. <laughs> and a Bay Area native and a great player. Should be in the Hall of Fame. Another 2 2 pitch. And a breaking ball is laced foul. Second deck. Well, you can see why Josh Reddick. And we don't know how this is going to turn out or how this game against this left is going to turn out, but he never gives up. 
on an bat, especially against a tough lefty. David Price, big walk behind the mound, trying to figure out what he's going to do next. Almost had a home run hit off him. So the battle continues. And it looks like Price is going to win the battle. It's popped up. And the third baseman, Roberts, has it. So when it's all said and done, it's a three up, three down inning for Price. Headed to the fourth, two nothing A's. What pitcher has the lowest ERA through their first six career starts in Oakland A's history? First six starts. Remember that because A.J. Griffin, well, this is his seventh start. So his ERA through his first six starts, 2.25. Faces Zobrist, Keppinger, and Joyce. Zobrist struck out swinging in the first inning. Hitters have to get used to A.J. Griffin and way he works so quickly, does not waste any time on the mound. What a great combination. It works quickly and throws strikes. You ever heard somebody, you ever heard a pitcher described as works quickly, but doesn't throw a lot of strikes? <laughs> it never happens. <laughs> Zobrist up the middle, and he's got the first hit for the race. Right. Trivia question. So it's not A.J. Griffin. It was 1987, Ray. And it was 1.25. One was he left handed? You asking me? Do you know? Give us a, give us some names. We're if, not allowed to answer that. I mean, if you're looking at me throwing your left hand up there, then drop a name. If you know, I think that'd be great because I don't know. Don't yell at me, Ray. Okay. <laughs> I'm not yelling. I'm just, <laughs> as you know, I'm just saying. You know, I was thinking maybe Kurt Young. That's a good one. Although 87, I think he was before that. He was around before that, wasn't he? For a rookie status. I don't know. Yeah. Just guessing. We're throwing guesses out there. 87. And he was left-handed. Left Tony Larusa joined the club. That was the uh, beginning of the the Mashers. Yeah. 86, 87. Three consecutive uh, rookies of the year. And Jose, Mack, and Weiss. Left-handed pitcher. 
A one pitch to Kepinger is a strike, and it's 0 2. Kurt had a great season in 89. You know, pitching for the A's in the World Championship season. Kepinger popped out to the shortstop in the first inning. Hits that breaking ball toward Inch. Backhand throws it to second, and they got it. What a play by Brandon Inch. It's amazing. He could have gone across the diamond with his strong arm and gotten Kepinger, but wanted to get the lead runner. He had to go to the line, backhand the ball, and then make a great strong throw from foul territory. Nice scoop at second by Jamal Weeks as he stayed on the back stretch like a first baseman. As no chance to turn a double play. Kevinger robbed of extra bases by Brandon Inns. Great play at third base. And Jamal Weeks, that's when you know there's only one play. Stretch, make the play, get out of the way. Jamal did it great. Here's Matt Joyce. He's blocked by Suzuki. Well, in a tight game like this, where it looks like both pitchers are pretty good. Look at the athleticism. <laughs> That's amazing. He can move behind the plate, and those are important. Try to keep the double play in order, keep the run out of scoring position. Now, did you say there was a trade made for catcher? Yeah, we're going to get to it in oh, a okay. moment. Okay. Remember, you said there was a catcher on the move? Yeah. The trading yeah. deadline tomorrow. It has a little something to do with the AL West. There was another trade just finished. The Cubs sent. Paul Mahalam and Reed Johnson to the Braves now. Probably doesn't do a lot for A's fans, but for the Braves, they're pretty happy. Mahalam's been pitching great for the Cubs. He's a left-handed starter. And they got an extra bat, right-handed bat. And the pitch didn't miss by much, just a bit outside. Time now for the Ford right choice. Wednesday in Toronto. Pretty good run support for A.J. Griffin. Facing the Blue Jays, he ended up going six innings, had a career high nine strikeouts. So he was pitching great. And the A's, they were swinging it. 16 to nothing was the final score. So that's the Ford Wright choice. Last start, a win. Griffin's won his last three starts against the Twins, against the Yankees, and against the Jays. And also now realizing the strike zone getting a little bit tighter. How about that? Yeah. A couple pretty good pitches to Matt Joyce that were called balls, but ended up walking on four pitches. So Roberts is the hitter, and he has a big swing and a miss. Well, he just did something. Kepinger might not be one of those guys that's the threat to steal, but excellent pitch right there to Roberts. It probably couldn't believe he missed it, but. There is no look back to second. It's a hammer. Sometimes a pitcher gets into where he concentrates so much on the hitter, he does not look back. Every time he does, which is good. And a curveball. Roberts took it and it dropped just a bit low. I wonder what he saw crossing the plate, though. I know. I mean, you saw where he caught it, but it breaks so much. I wouldn't be surprised if it crossed over that front knee of Roberts. High fastball, swing and a miss, two and two. I remember Barry Zito for so many years pitching for the Athletics. There's the high fastball. But Barry threw a big 12 to 6 curveball. Umpires give up on yeah. Call it before it even got to the plate, and then it dropped right in the heart of the plate. 2 2 pitch, breaking ball, strike three call. Nasty. <laughs> Unbelievable. Right over the top and just floats in. And Ryan Roberts swinging a couple of high right. fastballs, frozen on this great curveball. That time you could see the grip in his hand. But a couple short strides there. No contact. Ryan Roberts ground out to short, a strikeout, and a big strikeout with a couple of runners on base. So here's Carlos Pena, big out to get, two on, two out. Pena struck out swinging in the second inning. Some more of the 
struggles for Carlos Pena. Two outs and runners in scoring position. 136. The Rays know, as you see the shift done by the Athletics with Jamile Weeks in shallow right field. Huge hole push right where the second baseman would be playing. So the A's are hopeful that if he does, he doesn't hit the ball there. Instead, try to get out and pull the ball this direction. But just hope he doesn't go to the opposite way where there's a huge hole on the left side. And he drives one right center. Nobody's going to get it. One run scores. Matt Joyce digging around third. He's going to score. And Pena comes through with a two out, two run double. And we're tied at two. Now that had to feel good for Carlos Pena. Well, a big hit. They tried to go inside. He left it out in the middle of the plate. And that's one of the problems. He threw a very good change up. He swung and missed, but got the fastball. Split the gap in right center and two outs. That hurts. But you're right. Very good for Carlos. So RBI is 42 and 43. And here's Jose Molina. Curveball stays a bit inside. So we're tied at two, top of the fourth inning. Molina struck out swinging in the third inning. He's got new life, David Price, and he's were fortunate to score two off of him when they did. Molina with that open stance takes low. Molina last year with the Blue Jays. But I think you said it best, Ray. Really catching a lot. Probably more than the Rays wanted to catch him. Hicks has it. Side retired, but Carlos Pena with a two run double. We're headed to the bottom of the fourth. It'll be Cespedes, Carter, and Inch. We're tied at two. Has the lowest ERA through their first six career starts in Oakland A's history. Steve Ontiveros, 1.25 in 1987. So I was nowhere close. Figured that was going to be the case. Steve Ontiveros. Who was the left-hander you're thinking about? Kurt Young. Okay. You know what Steve Ontiveros did? He was the most. He, I, I his place to that had to be in. Immaculate. Oh, everything he had would to be pick hurt. up everything on the mound. Oh, yeah. He'd follow through and pick up a little piece of 
something, maybe a little. You know, the mound was clean in 87. Yeah, I mean, it was dirt, but it was clean. <laughs> clean dirt. But he was picking up stuff all the time. Claywood didn't have to do anything on the field because Anto would pick it up himself. <laughs> Anto became a, I think in Arizona, he had a baseball school where he taught pitching, did an excellent job. He was a very good pitcher for the A's. Cespedes to lead it off. He singled and scored in the second inning. And he hits a shot toward the shortstop. Rodriguez stays down and what was a tough hop. And he throws out Cespedes. All right, here's the trade that we were talking about. Giovanni Soto gets traded from the Cubs to the Texas now Rangers. Now Soto really struggling Chris the last couple of years, Hunter. but he was the rookie of the year in the National League in 2008. Well, they wanted another catcher and allows Mike Napoli to play more first base and you have Yovi Toyaba. But uh, they were looking for a catcher and they got one. But Napoli has not been the offensive force this year that he was last year. So Giovanni Soto from the Cubs to the Rangers. Of the year, the offseason, he lost a whole bunch of weight. Right. Came to spring training, looked scary thin, but figured he needed to lose some weight, and he did. But catches in Texas, he doesn't have to worry about losing weight. He will just show up, put the gear on there. You're gonna lose weight. Two and one to Chris Carter, who hit a line drive down the left field line for an RBI double in the second inning. Staying away from Carter in this at bat, at least the fastballs. It was the cut fastball yet for the double down the left field line. Now three and one. Price has retired six in a row. He is one of those guys, like all the great pitchers are. They generally settle down after you get some runs off them. It's early in the game. And the 3 2 fastball is low. So Carter with a good at bat. He walks. First walk for David Price. Scored 67%. Yeah, that's true. Right. some runs. 42 different innings. You know, Chris Carter, that last to bat is just a perfect example of what we're talking about the way he's become a patient hitter. He, he's not three and two, trying to come out of his shoes, just nice and easy and quick swing, and then able to take a pitch that was out of the strike zone, but yet ready to hit as he was in his first at bat with a couple of strikes. And here's Inge. And he swings at a high fastball. In struck out looking in the second inning. He's two for 12 in his career against David Price. Man, that one just a touch low. Inge has one of those interesting hitting streaks going. He got a nine game hitting streak. In those nine games, he has a total of 10 hits. So he's kind of got the one a game hit streak going. This one hit right field at five. And as we have seen, Inge, it's time of the A's and time of the Tigers. And he's won a good swing and contact away from hitting a home run. He has a, a very good swing. One we shot and showed against uh, Moore, Matt Moore in, in Tampa Bay. I mean, it was a rocket. Ball he hit here against Cordero on the Blue Jays, a rocket for the Grand Slam. One two pitch, breaking ball stays up and away. I think a lot of times what pitchers try to do, you see a lot of fastballs inside. When he extends his arms, that's when he usually does the most damage. Suzuki did his last time extending going to right center.
And Carter with his lead at first. Fastball swing and a miss, 97 miles an hour. So in strikes out for the second time. And that is strikeout number five for Price. The A's have teamed up with Wells Fargo to support our local schools. Bring your new school supply donation worth $5 or more to Friday home games, and you'll get a two for one field level ticket voucher. Wells Fargo and Oakland A School Supply Drive at every Friday home game this season, teaming up to make a difference. So Kurt Suzuki steps in. Kurt with an RBI double in the second inning. And first pitch is a strike. Suzuki picked up his 18th RBI with that double. Strike two. 0 and 2. Strike through the hard curveball to Johnny Gomes struck him out. That was in the, the first inning. But mostly everything hard from the left hand and right. Kurt's going to have to try to battle back on the 0 2 count. Fights that one off. Mariners and the Blue Jays are underway in Seattle, and the Mariners with a three to one lead over the Jays. The Mariners got a little run going. They've won four in a row. It's Romero and Iwakuma, the pitching matchup there. Fastball right there, strike three called. A couple more strikeouts for Price. He's got six, and we're headed to the fifth. It's a 2 2 game. Eat fresh, ask Glenn and Ray. Jason from San Jose asks, if the two of you were active players, what song would you choose as your walk-up music? I wouldn't have one. Oh, come on. Come on, I wouldn't Ray. have one. Oh. Well, you know what? Forget the question. <laughs> forget it. No fun. Just forget it. Forget it. You would have a walk-up song. Come on. What would it be? It would be uh, Solitary Man by <laughs> Neil Diamond. <laughs> Come on. You got to have a song. Uh, you have to. I'm, I'm forcing you to have a song. 
watching. Give me some options then. How about that one that they play here at the Coliseum in the eighth oh. inning? Come on, man. You can call me maybe. I don't know. You don't know? Or you don't know the name of the song? No. All right. Well, okay, so. Well, okay, you're all over me. What would be yours? Uh, you're the cat, Al Stewart. Oh, my God. What? What is that? You just asked me. I mean, I gave you an answer. Just having some fun going back into the 70s a little bit. <laughs> wow. Oh, we're being silly. Hmm. You got to have one. Big curveball, and it's a swing and a miss by Sean Rodriguez. There, that's a there. good song right there. Big curveball, swing and a miss by Sean Rodriguez. Well, they're looking back at <laughs> Griffin like, what is that? Now that's a big curveball, swing and a miss. That was a good curveball. Yeah. Well, the next time we meet, we'll have to have. Uh, I have to think about yeah. it. All right, we'll give you yeah. to tomorrow. We don't forget though. Do. See, the only reason I said that because walk-up songs are relatively new. Yeah, well, yeah. Sure. so so that's why it's hard for someone who played when I did. I understand. You know that they didn't even have sound systems. <laughs> <laughs> Diamond Vision, what was that? That's true. You're right. So it's you know it's kind of hard to think about something like that. Yeah, Twenty-four hours. So one and two, the count to Desmond Jennings with BJ Upton waiting in the on deck circle. Fastball fouled straight back. Two walks, five strikeouts for Griffin. One of those two walks scored. Hey, Delaire just gave me a good suggestion. Walk the line by Johnny Cash. Yeah, you're a Johnny Cash guy. Boy named Sue. Yeah. See, now things are warming up a little bit. Bring a fire. I mean, you know, there's different. <laughs> 2 2 to Jennings, and he drives one left field. Smith going back. He's near the wall, and he leaps and he makes the catch. So Jennings just missed it. Yes, he did. A little bit towards the end of the bat. Seth Smith, as we saw his leaping ability in Arizona. Didn't really have to leap as much, but scary. The way the ball just kept carrying it, got back to the wall and was not going to let the wall stop him as kind of a mini leap to bring it down. Griffin got away with one. And that one is a hanger and it's ripped deep, but foul. Now Seth Smith knew his couple of steps from the wall after hitting the warning track. Brought it in. So 0 and 1 to Upton. And he pops it up. Carter toward the seats. And he's not going to get it. Just out of his reach. But I think sometimes we'd had a question, subway fresh question about the sweet spot in the bat. Mm -hmm. Sweet part of the bat. Well, Desmond Jennings had hit his in the sweet part of the bat. It had been a 3 to 2 game. It would have been a home run, but. Looking above the trademark on a bat. Don't want to go towards the end, but there is a solid sweet spot. You get it there, it's going to try. One and two, Upton holding that bat high above his head. And now two and two. We've just been told Ray and not a big surprise, but the Rangers designated your Vittorio Alba for wow. assignment. As they picked up Giovanni Soto. Swing and a miss on a curveball. 2-2 two -two breaking pitch. Two strikeouts for Griffin in the inning. Six in the game. 2-2 two -two game. Bottom of the fifth coming up.
Railroads. Proud to welcome Thomas the Tank Engine and friends. Details at RoaringCamp.com. It's a 2-2 game, bottom of the fifth inning from the Coliseum. Lees and the Rays, first of three. Seth Smith to lead it off against David Price, who after giving up the two runs in the second has settled in. For the game, he's got one walk, six strikeouts in four innings, and he's thrown 62 pitches. It'll be Smith, Hicks, and Weeks. Price kicks, and the first pitch is a fastball for strike. out to the first baseman Pena for Smith in his first at bat had a good swing there at a fastball 0 and 2 it says a little bit easier to see the ball now I don't know that really helps that much David Price pitching whether it's twilight daytime nighttime but if anything it should be easier right now Just missed outside. See that pitch earlier in the at bat was called strike. It's, so, ama it's amazing a hitter can take the ball well, with strike two and, and not be swinging. That's a very good eye by Seth Smith that he would take one that close. Got a curveball there and he rolled it foul. And that was a good one to hit. See a pitcher shaking his hand. He knows he got away with a, a mistake pitch. Fastball and Smith just got a piece of it. So the count remains two and two. That's it. Leg lift the foot down. Seth Smith does a good job of that, whether it's against a lefty or righty, and better than the Friday game in Baltimore. 3 2 count, bases loaded. That would hit hard. Takes a big hop for Pena, who grabs it, runs to the bag, and that's out number one. Don't want to hit him to him. No, he's, he's, good. he's good first baseman. And Carlos Pena provided the power to first baseman, but gold glove defense as well. Did win one. Well, they could have won more. Tough position to win a gold glove, but he is very good. Great hands. So here's Hicks. Did you hear that song? Yeah, you like that? What was it? Oh. Midnight Rider. Let's write it down for tomorrow. Hicks struck out swinging in the second inning. The numbers from that Angels game. Angels beat Texas 15 to 8. Santana got the win. Oswald got hammered. The Angels scored nine runs in the sixth inning. Kenry Morales hit two home runs in that inning, a two run shot, and a grand slam. But there's a little bit more to that story. Morales became the third player in Major League Baseball history to homer from both sides of the plate in the same inning. Two run homer and a grand slam. Kendry's Morales. 16 hits for the Angels. Home runs by Trout. The two by Morales and his Torres. For Texas, Cruz, Hamilton, and Napoli. The Angels pound Texas 15-8. Two two pitch and slider down and in and that's a strikeout. Maybe that was the cutter at 89. But 
Either way, a nasty pitch, and that's strikeout number seven. Hard down and in. Might have been a foul Hello, tip he's held he's on to by Jose Molina. Is and the next looks back with it. Nasty hard slider cutter down and in. It's very tough. So two outs. Here's Weeks. Weeks with a strikeout and a fly ball to center field. First pitch is a strike. The Red Sox beat Detroit seven to three. Buck Holtz the winner, Scherzer the loser. Pedroia and Middlebrooks homer. So the Red Sox are being a ten game homestand. I'm sure they're hoping that. They're getting ready to make their move. We'll see. Probably the club is not going to be do, doing much selling no, because no. they feel they're going to be in the middle of it. I like the confidence of the clubs that you know, they have the players to do it. They may be struggling, but still a lot of baseball remaining. As the A's know very well. well. The Red Sox get up over the 500 mark when they're third in a row. Just a bit inside with a 97 mile an hour fastball. So two and two to week. Starting to lose a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Getting tired. He has been consistent, very consistent with his fastball strikeouts at 96 to 97. Getting a little bit extra when he needs it. That one bounced to Zobris, who juggles a little bit on an in-between hop, but it's a three up, three down inning. Five in a row retired by Price, and we're on to the six. It's a 2 2 game. It's the fourth when the A's play the Blue Jays. 7,500 kids will receive an A's lunchbox cooler. It's presented by Catacom. For more information and tickets, go to localathletics.com slash tickets. Big weekend against the Blue Jays starting Thursday. Zobrist to right. Reddick near the wall, and he makes the catch about a step in front of the wall. So Zobrist, he just missed it. So AJ Griffin is living on the yeah. edge just a little bit. But well, there's something about when Griffin pitches and Josh Reddick plays right field. Remember, he scaled the this chain link fence. Yeah. The, now, buddy, number seven, <laughs> the, the play in Toronto Jack got him the Spider Man outfit. This time, just casually went back, knew he had it all the way. Griffin did not know, though. Josh Reddick, a very good outfielder, and he handled that one well. A little bit outside to Keppinger. 
Keppinger popped out to short, reached on a fielder's choice in the fourth, and then scored a run. And he hits this one to center field, playable for Suspidus. And that's out number two. Well, one of the good guys, Dr. Elliot Schwartz and his wife Patty, who is one of the team doctors, and good to see him at the, the park, one of the big fans for the A's. And he's always there. Got the good seat, too, right down in the tunnel. Good man, good doctor. Good to see him back healthy and going strong. So two outs for Matt Joyce, who takes the big curveball, drops in first try. Joyce walked and scored one of the two walks issued by Griffin. That was a four pitch walk too. That that one hurt. Yep. Especially uh, following the hit by Zobris. Got the fielder's choice. Great play by. Brandon Inge, it could have been an even tougher inning. Good defensive play by Inge with a big two run double by Carlos Pena. Well, that's right. You think about that play if it's not made, it obviously would have been a bigger inning. Yeah, it might have been a double too yeah. if it, Brandon doesn't catch the ball. Two and two now to Matt Joyce. Hit to right field, and that's hit well. Reddick going back. He's at the wall. He leaps, and it is gone. Matt Joyce, a solo home run with two outs, and the Rays grab the lead at three to two. So number twelve home run total for number nineteen, Matt Joyce. Ryan. Trying to stick a fastball again. They want to go inside. Look at the location. It came back towards the middle of the plate. Up. But with two strikes, he just jumped on it. And for some reason, Josh Reddick thought it was going to come down. Did. Towards center where Suspidus has it. Ryan Roberts goes after the first pitch. He flies out. But Matt Joyce with a solo home run. So we're going to the bottom of the sixth. It's 3 2 Rays. Light Freeze Cam is brought to you by Frostbrew Coors Light. It's the world's most refreshing beer. No, I believe that was a giveaway. Ace Fleece Blanket. It's given away prior to one of the first fireworks shows, yeah. so maybe we could have that blanket and head down on the field. Sitting is limited. <laughs> and don't you forget it. <laughs>
Well, A.J. Griffin would like to forget a couple of uh, fastballs at missed location. Carlos Pena and Matt Joyce trying to go inside. The ball just drifted too much. Actually, too much movement towards the middle of the plate. The numbers for A.J. Griffin, good, very good, but Matt Joyce, a two out, we two strike. Home run on a fastball, missed location. It's that's usually one. what happened. Mistake is made, and good hitters take advantage of it. So the A's will now have to get to work against Price. 79 pitches through five innings, so a little bit of a high pitch count for Price. Now he certainly is a workhorse. And he will go, go as high as 123. But right now he's worried about the bottom of the sixth. Gomes, Reddick, and Cespedes. Johnny Gomes, a strikeout and a ground out to short. First pitch, fastball, first strike. And that one's drilled to left field. Jennings going back, and it looked like that one got off the end of the bat a little bit by Gomes. And yes, it did. Just did not have that crisp crack to it. And just check the end of the bat, and yep. that's where it was. Well, it left his bat great. They're thinking, well, it could be a tie game because if it hit it on the sweet part of the bat, it would have gone. That's the difference. And maybe if Price took just enough sure. off the pitch for him to get out in front, pull it, but open up too much. First pitch to Reddick. He had a big rip, rolls it foul. Reddick with a fly ball to center field. And a pop out to third. He had a good battle with Price in the third inning. And now he's behind in the count 0 2. Doolittle gets up. Same spot that Reddick was in in that third inning at bat. Better Jose Molina has his idea of what he wants to do on two. David Price, another idea. So they're going through the signs again, a number of signs. And another fastball, and Reddick fouls it back. Not surprised the first two fastballs were inside. The Reddick made contact, but not an aggressive swing. Like Price, if he could avoid pitching him away, because Reddick likes to extend his arms, and he did it nicely, foul in the back. And he can extend his arms, but then gets a fastball or some off speed pitch inside, he can bring the hands in nicely. Just a bit outside. Cespedes waiting in the on deck circle. It's the mayor of Oakland. Good seats, enjoying tonight's ball game. She had a Reddick belt on there. He's a big fan. Mayor Quan sitting out in right field. Nice. Well, she's got the Reddick belt. All right. Nice seats. And a big swing again by Reddick. So he's timing that fastball. <laughs> he gets a good rip. And that's why we like. Ball. Another good swing. Fouled straight back. Five pitches at first at bat, ten the second. Seven this one. And still ongoing. No 
Price taking his time on the mound. Now he's ready. He misses outside, so Reddick has worked it full. See what Price throws Reddick on a full count. Right with the fastball, 98 miles an hour, and it's called strike three on the outside corner. Amazingly, he took similar pitches that were called balls. That's why he's upset. The previous pitch, he took it. Now batting. And the side, the height was fine. And Reddick thought he had drawn the walk because of the location outside. I think he knows it, a little bit upset. He knows the strike zone, and for him to take that pitch, start to throw his bat, probably thought he had the strike, or at least the, the ball forward. So Cespedes steps in with two outs. Single and a run scored in the second inning for Cespedes. And a ground out to short in the fourth. That single in the second inning was an infield single. Showed off his terrific speed. Amazing how some hitters, in the case of Cespedes, his first two at bats, one of the first two first pitch both times. So this time, though, takes a fastball down the middle, doesn't swing. Diving in the hole as Rodriguez gets up. His throw is not in time. It bounces away from Pena. Sensational play by Rodriguez. But the throw bounced, and Cespedes, well, he may have beat it out anyways. It was going to be a close play. Well, great play. And it's, uh, we've seen a lot of times where the infielders go for balls, and Carlos Pena could not come up with it, but. What a play by Rodriguez. They short hop the ball run going into the runner. He digs it out. I think he's out. I think so too. And Rodriguez, not much of a grit. That's probably why the ball was thrown into the dirt. But what a tremendous play to even catch the ball. Cespedes, though, this time maybe not looking back if he did. It didn't slow him down because he it did beat it out. Well, the A's get their first hit since the second inning. Here's Carter. Go to first. Cespedes is happy. Carlos Pena speaks <laughs> Spanish. Uh, got a conversation. That's the most we've seen Cespedes talk <laughs> at first base. It's animated. Yeah. I think if you said every day. It's a learning experience for Cespedes would be a major understatement. That's right. Got a decent lead. And the pitch is a fastball high. But if he can just distract David Price enough that Chris Carter gets a pretty good pitch to hit, he doesn't have to try to steal. They're He's in a shift for Carter. He is very quick and he's had a tendency to pull the ball. You see where the second baseman, Zobris, is playing, almost behind second, and left side of the infield, definitely a pull. Price has a good enough move to be tough to run on. Is that changeup from Price? Molina also very quick, as all the Molinas. Benji now retired, but Yadier and his brother Jose here tonight. Very good throwing, quick release, accurate throw. Just did not follow through with the changeup to Carter. And his price left the changeup outside. So two and up, and the pitch to Carter is outside. Three and up. So the A's trying to muster a little two-out rally against Price, trailing three to two.
ninety six pitches for Price. Interesting throw over as we have seen a few guys run three and zero. Oh. Just happened in Baltimore, but David Price made that throw to first just to try to settle himself to make the three zero -oh to Chris Carter. Yeah, that one's outside, and it's a four pitch walk to Carter. Second time Carter has walked. You know, the velocity's there at ninety six. Jim Hickey's going to pay him a visit, but. For some reason, he just didn't follow through on any of the pitches to Carter. And the Bernie. So Inge with a chance to tie it up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting in the wrong direction. Just think if Balfour comes in, what's he going to do? You know what? <laughs> in Rome. <laughs> yeah, go behind the plate. If you're in right field and Grant Balfour comes in, you don't have a choice. <laughs> that group has a good time. There is no doubt about it. Well, that's Brandon Inns walk up song. We can't have burned us. That was, that's it. I like it. So Inge with a couple of strikeouts tonight. Looking for a big hit. Same give a Bernie to Coco. At home plate. <laughs> First pitch is outside. I mean, Price is now wondering where the strike zone went, and it has come and gone tonight, Angel Hernandez. You have to figure five pitches all out of the strike zone, all outside. He has to try to throw something inside. So he follows through, finishes his delivery. And he's going to stay outside. And that one he did follow through, and he's able to pinpoint the inside corner. Going to have that nice of an easy delivery, and look up on the board and see an easy 96. Good idea, Brandon Inns taking after he's thrown five out of the strike zone, making throw a strike. He did. So one and one inch. And that one took a little off, had a little wrinkle on it, and it's in for a strike one and two. I think that's the cutter yeah, at 90 miles an hour. Yeah, backdoor cutter, same one that Chris Carter hit down and in. This one backdoor, threw it outside, brought it over the outside part. As Brandon in asked Angel Hernandez if it was a strike. One two pitch. Fastball got in on Inge. Well, both these teams, good bullpens. Talking to our good friends, Dwayne Stats, TV announcer for the race. He said, Yeah, he said the bullpen's been very, very good. And it's going to be a bullpen game. One, two, swing and a miss. He struck him out 97 miles an hour. So in strikes out for the third time. Nine strikeouts for Price. Braisley, 3 2 after six.
is brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. And by Jack in the Box. Get the all-American Jack combo at Jack in the Box. It's a no-nonsense burger with fries and a drink for only $4.99 plus tax at participating stores. A.J. Griffin back out on the mound. 92 pitches through six innings. The Rays leading three to two. So David Price has been impressive tonight. Not that we're necessarily surprised by that. But he did something last inning that he's very capable of what he's done tonight. Get in trouble, strike out. Yeah. They can get a strike out. That's why the A's were fortunate to score when they did. And for Mike Gallego to send Cespedes, it's scored easily, but you just don't take a chance. You get a runner in scoring position. The price can really settle down and throw hard to get the strikeouts when he needs. Pena, the big hit in this game. A two out, two run double in the fourth inning. Change up stays outside. The Orioles beat the Yankees tonight in New York, five to four. The Orioles in the mix coming into tonight. They were just two games behind the second place wild card team. Yankees not playing great, right? They have lost eight of their last 11. See where there's some concern about Mark Teixeira injury. Yeah, I didn't say read it was his. We'll find out into the shift weeks flips to first and they did not quite get him. head first die by Pena. So weeks made a nice play but he was also out on the grass a little ways and that makes that throw a little bit longer. Well, they had to throw off balance and this ball is going to end up right where the short started second base would be playing kicks diving and Jamal Weeks just could not get a lot on the throw as Carlos probably could have stood up run through the bag and Still been safe. Decided to go to the headlong dive. No leadoff single for Pena. He's two for three. And here's Jose Molina. Ball hit foul. It was a uh, Teixeira's wrist has been bothering him. Okay. And they're a little bit concerned about that. They're going to give Teixeira an MRI tomorrow. So the Yankees still with a six and a half game lead in that East, but some injuries starting to pile up. They have been quiet with the trade deadline approaching. 1 p.m. Pacific time is the trade deadline tomorrow. Pitch out, nothing going on. And it's not a bad pitch out. I'm not surprised the A's called it. Jose Molina, if he hits the ball on the ground, you could take your time, still turn the double play. He grounded out to short his last time and wasn't even halfway to the second, to first base. The Molinas never have been able to run. No. Especially a Benji hit for the cycle, but that was rare as it happened in Boston. But the hit and run handles the bat well, does Jose Molina. Just because there's one pitch out doesn't mean they won't try. They hit the runner in motion again. Swing and a miss. One and two to Molina. Hard slider. Down and away. So the slow curve has gotten him, the hard slider. And a breaking ball is lined to right for a base hit. Pena is going to try for third. Reddick's throw is there, and Pena is out. Wow. You just should know better. <laughs> it's amazing how everybody gets excited who's an Oakland A's fan and knows the reputation of Josh Reddick and his arm. And you see a runner turn second base, and you say, Show some respect. <laughs> what are you doing? Exactly. 
And a perfect throw again. Brandon Ange, a very nice play going after the ball. Carlos Pena, not a bad play. Ball to right field. Wrong guy to run on, especially Josh Reddick and his arm and his accuracy. So Molina now at first for Rodriguez. But you no, know, you think about if he stays at second, you get first and second, yep. nobody out with your ninth place hitter coming up. The sacrifice, turn it over to the top of the batting order. Ange, a very nice play. This ball just to the outfield side of third. Carlos trying to go inside and avoid the tag. So Reddick does it again. Number 11. Got Brett Laurie in Toronto on a fly ball. Got Mark Teixeira here, last homestand on it. Molina goes, swing and a miss, the tag, and he's out. So there you have it. Another mistake by the Rays and the A's. Well, the defense just stands up, takes advantage. You know, a great pitch to run. I don't care who's running, except Kurt Suzuki makes a perfect throw to second base. Slow curveball, which is a great pitch. Anybody with any speed might beat it out. But it is Jose Molina. And he gets the high fives for the base hit. But the A's, meanwhile, that's two hits. Nobody on base. Yep. Because of two great throws, Josh Reddick and now Kurt Suzuki. And that one's looped to left field. Smith coming in, and he makes a nice running catch. Just your normal <laughs> three hitters, three outs, and we're headed to the bottom of the seven. <laughs>
102 pitches and nine strikeouts. And the first pitch is a strike. Davis, the righty, Jake McGee, Wade Davis. Outside corner, strike two. Kurt Suzuki goes for a little walk. Kurt's had an RBI double and a strikeout. Kicks and the pitch just missed outside. Sean Doolittle was up. Looked like he might be coming to the seventh inning, but the A's didn't score. AJ Griffin back out. Retired three in a row. One way or the other. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. But his first time this season in his major league career that he's gone seven innings. Jay Griffin finished the top and so he continues his string of at least six innings. Might be finished though. He has it's been a job well done. They call those four to start, right? Yep. Seven, three. Six and three. Yeah, You're good. <laughs> 4.50 ERA. <laughs> Slider that stays high. Two at two. Two walks, nine strikeouts for Price. It's interesting with a good fastball that David Price throws and hands consistently tonight. 96 to 98. Still flips an occasional breaking ball, maybe to show, but I think when he does that, it has got to be looking fastball. See if Kurt is. And that one in under the hand. Suzuki swings and misses, and that is strikeout number 10. And here's our Chevron pitching matchup for tomorrow night's game Shields Malone. So Shields. Having a little bit of an off year this year, and Tommy Malone trying to get that tenth win. 6:30 A's pregame live, and then the ball game at 7:05 right here in Comcast Sportsnet California. So Shields and Malone. And if James Shields makes the start tomorrow night, he will not have been traded. The trading deadline will have passed yeah. by some six hours by the time he would take them out or start to warm up. There's been talk about Shields being traded, but. The clubhouse presence uh, this staff and a lot of good young pitchers and the price and shield has been a couple of veterans. That looks in the rookie of the year from last year. Well, and that group is keeping this team yeah. in contention. Pitching staff. Third time this year that Price has struck out 10 or more, and it's the second game in a row. Last start at Baltimore, seven innings, no walks, 10 strikeouts. So this is not a huge surprise. He's sixth in the American League in strikeouts. He now has 140. Two of the three. 10 plus came has come against the A's. He'll have more throughout his career. Probably won't catch the Ryan Express though. Nolan Ryan probably strike out more hitters than anybody in the history of the game, but he usually went in double figures. Very close. That was a strike to Josh Reddick. That was a strike. Right. Yep. That's almost the identical location, if not the identical location. An inconsistent strike zone tonight from Angel Hernandez. They are pitch and that one called strike three. Gotta be kidding me. The exact same pitch that was called a ball. I mean, I, I it's very surprising. You could put a 
napkin over those last two. One a ball, one a strike, and that's what's confusing for a hitter. Just like Josh Reddick, you take one that's called a ball, and the very next pitch, identical location, and you're walking back to the dugout. So Hicks will hit three consecutive strikeouts for Price, so he's trying to finish with a flourish. First pitch is a bit low. Pitch number 115 for Price. 123 is his season high. Hicks has struck out twice, both swinging. High fly ball, pretty long hit. Joyce going back, still going back, and that baby is gone. That's some opposite field power there. Fastball, great swing, similar to what he did. David Price kind of went in that low, oh no, form. And when he saw his right fielder going back and it kept carrying, kept carrying, heavy air, nighttime, and it carried out to tie the game. Wow, what opposite field power. I didn't think it was going to go that far. Just the fact it was such a high fly ball. I agree. And as the night, as it gets darker, nighttime ball does not carry as well. So this game is tied at three. Wow. Good swing, great swing, and I mean that's tremendous opposite field power. Again, right center against the Rangers to start this great streak. And this time goes Apple again with a solo. Giving him three and three big ones. So 0 and 2 to Jamile Weeks. So two outs, nobody on. Price struck out Suzuki and Smith and picks homers going the other way. The Rays, three runs coming with two outs. The Athletics getting two in the one inning and a big home run to tie it. 120 pitches now for Price. And that one hit hard toward Pena, who's got it. Pena steps on the bag side, retired. Brandon hits. Just another hero. His third home run of the year, and it ties the game in the bottom of the seventh inning.
3-3 going to the top of the eighth inning. And when it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune-Up, your oil change tune-up and smog experts. So the lefty Sean Doolittle comes in. 18th appearance, 4.29 ERA. He's got a win. He will face the top of the order. First pitch is a strike to Desmond Jennings. Jennings, Upton, and Zobrist. This one's popped up. Weeks out, Reddick in. And Reddick makes the catch. Number one. A.J. Griffin, another very good outing. This time going seven innings and finishes, giving up just the three runs, couple of walks. And he had no decision for the A's right hander thanks to Brandon Hibbs, opposite field home run. And, Cap, don't you think the top of the seventh inning looks very big now? With hit, yeah, I hit. thought that. I thought that too. Yeah, yeah unbelievable to think that David Price could have had at least another run out there. He might have been back in the dugout with the lead. Now gives up the tying home run. Looks like his night is finished. That's all you have. I mean, that, if you play smart and just execute a little bit. And, right? and if you don't do that against a team that's hot like the A's, Cespedes on the move toward the wall. He leaps and he caught it. Cespedes with a leaping catch at the wall. He was not right up against the wall, but he was pretty darn close. A good fastball pitcher as David Price has been. Good fastball from Doolittle. Good extension by Upton. Watch it. He's calling on Moff using the glove. Yes. Josh Reddick coming over, but there's the glove. That's tough. What does it say? I have it. He has to learn how to speak English and say, I got it, I have it, something, because the glove, it's kind of tough for an outfielder to see the glove extended like that when Reddick is watching the ball as well. So here's Zobrist, a switch hitter. Strike, and it's 0-2. Zobrist is one for three. A base hit in the fourth inning. And he drives with the right center. Cespedes and Reddick going back. Warning track. Reddick's got it. Side retired. So three five ball outs. Retired at three after seven and a half. Upper deck? No way! Here's our game summary. It's brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. 3 5 and 0 for the race, 3 5 and 1 for the Athletics. Joyce with a home run and Brandon Hicks with a big home run in the bottom of the seventh that tied this game at three. Here's our true story brought to you by McDonald's on this date in 2005. Johnny Gomes, as a member of the Rays, hits three home runs in one game. He does it against the Royals. 
was the first three home run game in then Devil Rays history. They, of course, now are just the Rays. And Johnny Goals, he's got a three homer game in his career. Look at the hair. Yeah. Oh, nice. Johnny. Actually, he's done it twice. I stand corrected. He did it against the Nationals in 2009. Well, Johnny Gomes did it against the Rays' new pitcher tonight. That's what Johnny Gomes did. So we highlight the Petaluma favorite and facing Peralt. And remember the home run he hit in Tampa. That was against this guy in the 12th inning. And he's winning four to three. So Peralta kicks in the first pitch is on the outside corner first strike when it's time for change think speedy oil change and tune up oil change tune up and spot experts so Peralta comes in one and three with a 3.95 ERA 51 strikeouts in 41 innings and try to throw Johnny in one two fastball inside in that game in St. Pete and took him deep for the home run good split just threw it out of the strike zone. Home run and a double indeed. Reddick will be next and then Cespedes. Swing and a miss. Ball diving down and in to go. Uh, he'll throw a good splatter to him, 14 fastball and might have just gone right to a strikeout pitch early. Cook starts to throw. Oh. And that one's driven to center. Upton going back. Still going back. Near the wall. He's got it for out number one. See the quick pitch? And Johnny had a very good swing considering Peralta did not come set. Watch this, just straight up and right over the top, and Gomes got the fastball straight away centered. Johnny hit that on Wednesday afternoon. You got another home run. Or just stopped carrying the straightaway center. Maybe thought he hit it enough to get it out, but night time, straightaway center, 400 feet, just didn't make it. So here's Reddick. Reddick is 0 for 3. Fly out, pop out, and a strikeout. And with Cook warming up, Ray, he's probably going to pitch yeah. the top of the ninth no matter what happens, whether the A's get a run or not. A's might need to get him back more in a regular working because he had the week off. Gave him a day off after working three consecutive, but then the A's. Had some games that he never got in. Drops in for a strike. So the count one and one to Reddick. Peralta has allowed seven home runs this year in 41 innings, so that's a lot. A reliever. Change up or split it's split. It. It's it's kind of floats split. outside. Yeah. Yeah. That good bullpen we were talking about. With Fernando Rodney at the end, he's having a terrific yeah. season. There's Carter, a couple of walks and a big, big double against David Price. Talking about Peralta with Chilla Davis. Fastball. Reddick swings and misses. Two strikes on Johnny Gomes and with a quick pitch. See if he does it again with a couple of strikes just to change it up a little bit. Gomes almost got it. Reddick reaches for that one a little bit. Peralta is the guy who was suspended for eight games 
Umpires found a, what they called a foreign substance in his glove after he threw a pitch. So he has served that suspension. Pintar. Stick him. <laughs> there you go. There it works. So another 2 2 to Reddick with Cespedes waiting in the on deck circle. And he got him with that splitter. He's got that herky jerky delivery yeah. as well. So that is 12 strikeouts now by A's hitters. And right over the top and change of speed. way out in front. So Cespedes will hit two outs, nobody on base. He's looking for a long one. They got a two out home run from Hicks in the seventh that tied up this game. Cespedes steps in. Well, we've seen him hit off speed pitches. And a fastball right there for a strike. The hitter seeing a pitcher for the first time or is a little while since the A's faced the Rays back in early May. Hitter might take a first pitch. And that works out well for the pitcher and the catcher. In this case, Malay to call it first pitch fastball. It's usually a very good pitch to hit right down the middle. Cespedes took it. Let's see if it goes the splits. It did, but it stayed outside. One and one to count. No, Ray, we were just in Toronto. We saw Travis Snyder, right? Young left handed hitter. Where'd he go? Pittsburgh. Blue Jays trading. First round draft pick Travis Steiner to the Pirates. So the Pirates are adding and not subtracting at the trade deadline. This one's popped up. It's going to be Zobrist who had the shift on and he makes the catch. So Joel Peralta has a three up, three down bottom of the eighth. Ninth inning coming up. We are all knotted at three. Time now for the AT&T reverse, reverse replay. How about the seventh inning? The Rays with a one-run lead. This is a base hit to right field. Carlos Pena, where are you going? Josh Reddick already has 10 assists. You're number 11. Great throw to Brandon Edge. A great tag. And then Jose Molina on a swing and miss. I hope a hit and run. 
Perfect throw by Kurt Suzuki to second. And that quickly, two hits, both back in the dugout. Haynes got out of the inning. And then Brandon Hicks tied it with a solo home run. So great defense by the A's. Indeed turned in to offense to tie the game. So Ryan Cook comes in. And Kepinger swings at the first pitch toward right field, and that's out number one. So when it's time for change, think speedy oil change in tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and smog experts. So Cook comes in for his 44th appearance. It's the luxury of being at home if you're tied going to the ninth inning. It will not be a save opportunity in the game. So you can get your closer an inning and hopefully get your team back in the dugout. Well, one thing the first four hitters facing Doolittle and the first now facing Cook swinging early against hitters and fastballs. So good idea. Slide a first pitch out of the strike zone, but got to take the hitter off the aggressiveness. Swinging her. Wade Davis was up last inning. He's up again. Left field, Smith a long run toward the foul line. He's got it, and that's out number two. Hey, baseball at Comcast Sports Center, California. It's brought to you by Cash Creek's Tropical Riches. With cash and prizes daily through September 3rd, visit CashCreek.com for details. So here's Ryan Roberts. First pitch to Roberts is a slider. Misses one and all. Roberts a ground out, a strikeout, and a flyout. He has got good power. He's found that out in Arizona. Side, so it's three and oh. Carlos Pena would be next if Roberts get aboard. And he will. Fastball outside, so a two out walk to Roberts. Pretty good speed in Roberts also, and as Carlos Pena who Tie the game with a two run double to right center. Now batting, number 23. That was in Carlos the fourth. Pena had an infield single in the seventh, so he's two for three. He's got 14 home runs on the year. The closer, Fernando Rodney, has now joined. Wade Davis swing and a miss. Pena was trying to give the Rays the lead. That's not surprising to see Carlos Pena, a good power hitter, swing at a first pitch fastball. And, well, running away from him after a four pitch walk to Brian Roberts, he's not going to make him throw a strike. Trying to sneak attack. Roberts inches off a little bit. Does not have a real big lead. After the throw yesterday, end up down the right field line in Baltimore. Be careful. <laughs> this guy's not getting a big lead. Suzuki's already made one great throw, getting Jose Molina, and even though it was Jose Molina running, still slow curve, but a perfect throw by Suzuki. Fastball fouls it back and it's 0 and 2. The outfield is very, very deep there. Try to cut off anything that would be headed for the gap. And the shift is on in the infield. Opinion, who's very deliberate. 
hits. Now he climbs back into the batter's box. Roberts takes off, and did he go around? No! Oh, man. Wow. And Roberts is going to get a stolen base. So that turns out to be a huge play. Let's see. Boy, it looked like he went. Slider in the dirt, and you know, he did stop it pretty quickly. Roberts stealing second on a, on a slider that Kurt Suzuki thought had been strike three. Looked like Pena, though, as close as it was, might have held up. Too close, really, to tell. Strike three called. Slider on the outside corner. Pena flips his bat, and we are headed to the bottom of the ninth. Walk off time for the A's tied at three. It's a 3-3 game here at the Coliseum. Mayor of Oakland, Mayor Kwan, still out in right field. She's thinking about witnessing a walk-off from the right field <laughs> seats. I'm thinking about witnessing a walk-off from the broadcast group. What about you? I agree. Well, we're coming to expect it. Well, it's, I mean, Brandon Hicks ties it. Seventh inning. Two outs, and Wade Davis comes in. With a tie game of bottom of the ninth. So, yes. These people coming here expecting it. So when it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune Up, your oil change tune up and smog experts. Good numbers out of the bullpen for Wade Davis as he faces Chris Carter, the first pitch. The overhand curve in first drive. We know Wade Davis as a starter. He's been in that rotation for the last two years for the Rays, but in the bullpen this year. The versatility that Joe Madden has, along with Jim Hickey's pitching coach, to be able to take guys who have been very good starters, put them in the bullpen, interchangeable, makes it nice. That one's low. Davis won 12 games in 2010. He won 11 games in 2011. They sort of had an extra starting pitcher yeah. coming out of spring training, so they sent Davis to the bullpen, and he's done a nice job. Now. Three and one now to Carter. Inge will be next. Look at the A's dugout. Look at this. They're all right there, top step. They're expecting. Yep. Same thing. But that's just the unity of this club, the closeness, guys cheering for one another. Let's get it done somehow, some way. Everyone pitches foul back. The Angels have won their game. They beat the Rangers 15 to 8. 
So the A's, if the A's can win tonight, look at the division. They would pick up a game in the Rangers and be only three and a half back. Three two pitch to Carter and a breaking ball swing and a miss. So that is the 13th strikeout for Rays pitchers tonight. They started him with a good curveball, finished him off with a hard slider. No contact, good swing, but better pitch. So one out for Inge. First pitch, fastball low. Inge has struck out three times, so he'd like to make up for that. Good swing, foul, straight back. So the A's got two in the second, and then the Hicks home run in the seventh. Raised with two in the fourth, one in the sixth, and one in the sixth on the Joyce home run. Davis had a good breaking ball. He's got a very good curve. Uh, that's uh, one of the better pitches, and you take a starter, put him in the bullpen, and if they have enough time to warm up on the bullpen, use all of the pitches, yeah. makes him even better coming in. The face is almost like bringing another starter. Because how often do you see a reliever have three pitches? And it's usually because they don't have time to get loose. And fans didn't like this one. And the way Jose Molina caught it, can understand why it looked like he caught it almost on the ground. Two two pitch. Fastball that was a little outside. Inch just got a piece of it. On deck is Kurt Suzuki. Swing and a miss. He chased a high fastball, 96 miles an hour. So Brandon Inge has struck out four times tonight. Uh, maybe the off speed pitch, the slider thrown to Chris Carter, three and two. Is Brandon Inge not able to catch up the fastball? So the average fastball to Brandon Inch tonight, 96. <laughs> four punch outs, four strikeouts. See. So see if Kurt Suzuki can join hero status. Outside with a fastball. Kurt with an RBI double in the second. Strikeout in the fourth. And strikeout in the seventh. Everybody in the A's lineup has struck out at least once, except for Cespedes. Now 2 0. Kurt Suzuki is not in the walk-off status. He's been 11 and Chris a couple of times, 10 others, but Kurt, maybe it's his time. Head in the count. Ranging far to his left as Roberts' his throw is way wide. All the way past the first baseman Pena. And the A's are going to get the winning run to second base. Roberts gunned it to first and it wasn't anywhere close to Pena. Well, you have to wonder if he had to let Rodriguez handle the ball. It would have been an easier play for him. He cut in front of Rodriguez. Suzuki busted down the line, and there's Rodriguez. And I think it would have been a better play because with an infielder making the 360 turn, sometimes it's tough to pick up the target. And right there, he just overthrew it towards the first base dugout of the Rays. And Carlos Pena tried to change the footwork and go after the ball, keeping his foot on the back. Couldn't do it. Well, now, Seth Smith, a chance to win it for the Athletics. And they're going to walk Smith and Brandon Moss is going to pinch it. Yep. 
Moss will hit for Hicks. Joe Madden looking at his lineup card. He knew that the situation came up. Seth Smith, a veteran, he knows that he's had some great seasons in Colorado coming through with hits. Good advance tonight, even though he's 0 for 3, but play the percentage. Put a couple of runners on base to set up a force. But he knew that Brandon Moss also was in the A's dugout. Even though Hicks had already hit the tying home run. This was a game winner for Moss. Looks like everybody's got a game winner, and I think they do. That was Epley. Base hit and Cespedes, who with just one out, remembered he he took off like there were two outs. Johnny Gomes with the scissor jump. So Brandon Moss gets another chance. So Suzuki at second, Smith at first, two outs, bottom of the ninth. More drama at the Coliseum every single game, it seems like. Well, that's a good point, Kevin. I think when you play close games, they're not blowouts. The A's had their blowouts on the road, scoring big time in Toronto. 16 runs in one game there. Jim Hickey explaining to more to Jose Molina. And it's Dallas Brayton. Good to see him back. He had a punt setback, not with his shoulder, but groin injury. And he's here to watch Brandon Moss and the rest of the A's. So the meeting comes to an end. Well, Hicks in his three at bats, he had the big home run in the seventh inning with two outs that tied it. So here he comes. First pitch to Moss is down and away. Uh, Moss does not waste any time. As he told us after he got the game winner against the Yankees. That game he had left the bases loaded twice with two outs. Came up, drove in the go ahead run, this time coming off the bench. Is a bit low, 2 0. So now Moss is in the driver's seat as far as the count goes. It's two and one. That is aggressive, and even though he went out of the strike zone, might as well be aggressive, go after it. Swing and a miss again, 95 miles an hour. So Davis challenging after he got behind in the count, two and zero. Oh. This one of Jim Hickey, the pitching coach, went out to remind Davis Molina about Brandon Moss, who did not start the game. Because they've stayed with fastball, all four fastballs. He's got the curveball, the slider in his back pocket. And did he go around? They're going to check. No, says Mark Carlson. Just watching did not look like he swung. Absolutely says Joe Madden. You be the see that's that's not a swing. If Carlos Pena's was not a swing on the 0-2, that wasn't a swing either. So full count. That'll help the A. Suzuki will take off. And he 
missed outside, and the bases are loaded. Guess who doesn't have a walk-off hit? Jamal Weeks. Thank you. Well, there's your uh, walk intentional, and then Davis walked now Moss. Second baseman, number 19, Jamal Weeks. And they're bringing the outfield in, figuring that Jamal Weeks is not necessarily going to drive the ball over their head. They'd rather rob him with the ball in front. Wow. Jennings coming in like it's. The yeah, base is loaded one out. Yeah, exactly. I don't know that you want to come in. Yeah, too is, I mean, there's a huge gap in left center. Wow. First pitch to Weeks. And that is on the inside corner for a strike. That is as shallow as you will see a left fielder with two outs. Look at this. That's amazing. Loop over the shortstop's head. This base hit. Oh, one pitch is outside with a fastball. One and one count. Weeks is 0 for 4 tonight. A couple of ground outs, a fly ball in the center, and a strikeout. Maybe they saw the video of Jamal Weeks hitting the base hit to left field down the corner, down the left field line in Baltimore, then with the A's ahead in their six run ninth inning on Friday in Baltimore. Just a bit high, two and one. Man cannot be disappointed that it's called intentional walk. Seth Smith, that's expected. Did not expect him to walk Moss. Six pitches and two and one to Weeks. Swing and a miss. Chase to high fastball. And the count now even at two and two. You have to wonder, though, the way Angel Hernandez has called this fastball starting from the first inning, if he had called it a strike. But problem is trying to get on top of the high fastball. That's one of the things that hitting coaches talk about, the difficulty. And that's why you try to lay off the pitch. Chiller could hit it. So two and two. There's your winning run. It's Kurt Suzuki. 90 feet away. Inside corner strike three called. And the A's leave the bases loaded in the bottom of the ninth inning. So we'll head to the tenth. And we are tied at three. August the 3rd, the show is set to the sounds of the Olympics. is presented by Chevron and begins after the A's play the Blue Jays at the Coliseum. Bring the family and your picnic blankets and enjoy the show from the outfield rest on field capacity 
is limited, even with your fleet flight. For tickets, go to oaklandathletics.com slash fireworks. So, extra innings as Eric Sogard comes in to play shortstop. Hicks was pinch hit four. Your extra inning games record. The A's seven and two. Surprise! They raise three and two. Sam Fold is going to pinch it. He's hitting for Jose Molina, and he takes first pitch low. So Fold, bad looking for a base runner. Cook only threw 11 pitches in that top of the ninth inning. So he's back out there. And now he's ahead of full one and two. Well, he is well rested. Just in a game on Friday in Baltimore. Not needed Saturday or yesterday. I think that was his first appearance in a week. To game on the Friday. Not close, and it's two and two to full. Now Sean Rodriguez is the scheduled hitter next, but Jose Lobaton has come in. Lobaton is a switch hitter. In grabs it off the shoot tops. That's a line out, and that's out number one. Well, we got in depth sports news for the Bay Area fan. Go deep with Sportsnet Central. Brought to you by Hyundai. It's coming up tonight at 10 30. It's over at Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Nate Longworth with these reactions, highlights, and analysis as the trade deadline looms as well in Major League Baseball. And the Raiders begin camp practice, so we'll keep an eye on the Raiders. That's NFL talk. John Henry Smith, David Feldman will host. There's Lobaton. He's a switch hitter. Takes a pitch a bit high. Joe Madden Madden. hitting for Rodriguez. Yeah, Joe Madden using fold to start the inning. They can try to get on base. Lobaton will stay in and catch for Molina, who fold hit it for. Desmond Jennings will be next. So two and one the count. Fastball maybe out of the strike zone, but he is looking to hit, and the ball just kept running. Swing and a miss on that one. Two and two. Toward left, Seth Smith racing back toward the corner, and he reaches down and he makes the catch. He had to go a long ways. That ball was moving away from him. Well, he made it look easy, and Lobaton thought he had extra bases. Seth Smith can play some outfield, and he shows it here. Great angle going back after the ball, and being a left-handed outfielder, love on his right hand, just reaches down casually, making a nice running play. But the angle in which he took after the ball. Is what made the play seem as easy as it was and robbing of a ton of extra bases. Jenny bends out of the way. I say the angle because when Cespedes has played left field, that's one of his problems. Something that if you're a customer playing a position, as Smith is in left field, then it's not a problem to take the correct angle. Cespedes is learning. Jennings fouls it back and it's one and two Desmond Jennings is 0 for 4 he reached on an air in the very first inning. Johnny Gomes looking at the scouting report on the left warming up in the bullpen that's plastered on the wall in the dugout the reminder to the players when certain pitches come in what the report is. 
and slider stays inside two and two the count. Pop up foul. Jennings got a fastball to hit. Bottom of the tenth inning, it'll be Gomes, Reddick, and Cespedes. Roll foul as Jennings kind of reached for it. Up for the A's. The Balfour in the A's bullpen, McGee in the Rays bullpen. Another foul ball. The count stays two and two to Jennings. Protecting swing and a breaking ball, and Jennings swung clearly a pitch out of the strike zone, but the way the ball was breaking, maybe thought it's going to break and stay on the inside corner. Just a touch outside, and it's three and two. He wanted, especially after seeing a couple of his, and Tommy Cam might have shown it on the corner. Smith and Reddick both called out on similar pitches. Swing and a miss. A fastball right by Jennings. So we're headed to the bottom of the tenth. Gomes, Reddick, Cespedes. See if the A's can finish it off here in the tenth. Presented by authority of the Oakland Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. For Tampa Bay, number 21, Bottom of the 10th inning. 3-3 in game. Three, game. Nine, and when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune-Up, your oil change tune-up, and small experts. So Jake McGee, the left-hander, comes in here in the bottom of the 10th. He's having a good year out of their bullpen. Sam Fold stays in the game. He's going to play left field. A few more changes for you. We'll give those to you in a moment. Well, Johnny Gomes was looking at in the scouting report. Guy throws a good fastball, mid 90s. He throws a slider, and he doesn't fool anybody. He just not going to try to trick him. Just goes right at him. So maybe Johnny's going to look for the the heater, mid 90s, and see if he can push one a little bit farther than he did last time against Peralta. First pitch is way high from McGee. Elliot Johnson is the shortstop. 
Jose Lobaton stays in the game, and he's the catcher. So fold and left, Johnson at short, Lobaton is the catcher. So the Rays have one position player left on the bench. It's Brooks Conrad. One one pitch up and away. In the hole, diving play by Roberts gets up, throws to first, not in time. A leadoff single for Johnny Gomes. And you know, there's nothing Rod Roberts could do. Johnny Gomes just hustling down the line, got out of the box quickly, and he does not take it. And watch him get out and start running hard. Roberts to the slide, Johnny Gomes hustling to be safe. Tough night for Brian Roberts. He's made the plays as well as he could. He just has had a couple of guys running hard, and Johnny Gomes pointing to first base umpire Ed Hickox in. I'm safe. Call me that. That's that's some hustle. So and that is your winning run. So here's Reddick. Reddick swing and a miss 95 miles an hour from McGee. Two strikeouts for Josh Reddick. Close pitch, but low, two and one. So Peralta went an inning, Wade Davis went an inning, and now McGee out of the bullpen for the Rays. is loaded in the bottom of the ninth inning. Swing and a miss as that one hit a little up. So two and two to Reddick. And it was up and see him try to get on top and just a little bit underneath couldn't handle it. Looking at 95 mile hour fastball up in the zone. It is. It is tough. Tough pitch to lay off. Tough. Even tougher to hit. This one's popped up foul. And thinking about Toronto and watching the Blue Jays use a shift. It's an opposite shift yeah. for Reddick and this guy and this at bat. That's interesting. Now granted he does. So very hard. McGee does and maybe they just feel like he's not going to be able to pull it. So you think he's going to get fastballs and not take a chance of hanging the slider to be able to pull. And the important thing when you use a shift or you're playing a guy a certain way is to pitch accordingly. But also the hitters can tell what a pitcher and what a defense is thinking about doing. See the hole on the right side? They have no inkling, no possibility of him pulling a ball in that hole. Pitch is high, and now it's a full count. Johnny Gomes taking a long look. At Mike Gallego. 
It's got to be hard to, to run in that situation just because you got to make sure he throws the plate if he does run, and you got to hope this contact is made. And it's not as Reddick strikes out. So that's the third time Reddick has struck out. And with one out in the tenth inning, that is the 16th strikeout by A's hitters tonight. Just the fastball, he knows it. It's up in the zone a little bit, in the strike zone, but it is almost like the A's Sean Doolittle in a sense. That McGee is, and he, he's pitched a little bit longer, but just fastballs. Just right over the top, good fastballs in the case of McGee, he's keeping them up in the zone. So here's Cespedes. Two for four, a couple of singles and a run score. And the first pitch, a fastball low. Well, the way Cespedes has been swinging the bat, as quick as he is, this might be perfect for him. If he's getting nothing but fastballs. And he has the ability with his bat speed to get and catch up to a good fastball. One there out over the plate, which is about where he likes it. Against the Dodgers and swung on gone. That was a three run walk off. Cespedes with 14 home runs on the year, 54 RBIs. Is that one off the leg of McGee who picks it up himself and throws to first to get the out? Looked like a kick save and he kicked it to himself. Yeah. That's a pretty good play. Wow. Uh, they're gonna uh, they're checking him out. He did kick with his left foot off the top of his, of his foot and a quick feed over to Carlos Pena. You know, if he let it go, it might have been a double play to end the game or in the inning because it was going right to Zobris, who was playing behind second. It's another hard hit ball by Cespedes. Yeah. Seems like every ball he hits is hard. Well, unless, you know, way he kicked it, kind of turned his foot and hit on top of his foot. Maybe that's why they're checking it out. Actually, as Angel Hernandez was walking out looking in the raised dugout, saying, is anybody going to come out and check him out? So they're going to let him toss a couple to see if he's okay. Chris Carter is the hitter. Or Brandon Inch. That would be an interesting call for Joe Madden. Carter, RBI double, couple of walks and a strikeout. Brandon Inch trying to make contact. You know what Chili Davis said? Fastball. <laughs> He's throwing, he hasn't thrown one breaking pitch in this inning. And if they pitch to him, I think it would be more of a rookie versus a veteran mm -hmm. in a game winning situation. So here's Carter. The second baseman Zobrist is playing right behind second base. Fold, Upton, Joyce are your outfielders. And Carter takes a bit high. Yeah, I guess this is one of those spots where if you're the pitcher and you fall behind in the count, is walk -off. Because the runner at second is, or the runner at first, if there were to be a runner, would not mean it. Carter takes a strike, one and one. And that's the pitch 
you nice to see Carter swing at the low fastball instead of one that's at the belt, maybe a little bit above. Because with his quick swing, it's really easier to catch up the low fastball. Zobris sneaking in and the ball trickles away from Zobris. Probably a little closer than the A's would prefer since he's the winning run. Close enough. Yes. Johnny almost tripped or slipped as he was getting back, diving in a second. So one and one to Carter. Fastball outside. Respect for Chris Carter and his ability to hit a fastball because that's all McGee is throwing. But look here, these two guys, and here's the space there. So the kind of shut off the hole between third and short. And Carter has been pulling the ball, but these are all charts that the team set up. I'm a little surprised to see, especially with the velocity of McGee, that they were playing that much to pull. Up and away again, and now it's three and one. If the pitching team. The catcher Lobaton is looking in the dugout, and I think they're going to put him on. And that's exactly what they'll do with two outs. And the ball goes to the backstop, and Gomes goes to third with a head first slide. Wow, well, the ace it doesn't hurt. No, it doesn't because you'd almost have to be assured. For Brandon Ange that he's going to get nothing but fastballs. Putting a runner at third versus a runner at second, just a little bit high. Yeah, not surprised to see that. It's not as easy as it looks to intentionally walk a hitter. Here's a guy that throws the ball mid 90s. So Johnny Gomes now at third. We talked about mistakes helping a club win. Inge has a walk off this year, and it was a grand slam. Yeah. He's got a chance to do it here with any kind of hit. <laughs> at the start of the pie, that yeah, was because <laughs> they didn't get Gomes and Kai Hui. So first and third, two outs. Inge has struck out four times. Let Carter have second, and wouldn't be a bad idea because it's not like there are two outs. It's not like he's going to line into a double play. He might as well take the force away. Carter looking at Ty Waller. He goes to second, which he's going to go, and that one missed outside again. So McGee keeps throwing balls outside. Situation like that, you don't want to give a team a chance to force out somebody at second. So you take the second base back. They're wanting to give you two on pitch, swing and a miss. That was the fastball. That one a little closer to the strike zone. So the count two and one. And a bloop to right field. And away again. Three and one. On deck is Kurt Suzuki. Well, the way McGee's going, loading the bases. He's having trouble finding the strike zone right now. And that time, Inge had a very good swing. So three and two. Gomes at third, Carter at second. That one 
foul back again. Now, I mean, McGee hadn't thrown much of anything except a 95-mile-an-hour fastball. It's just a matter of location. If he can throw for a strike or if he's... But it's the fastball. I mean, he only throws fastball slider. Yeah, and and the slider the is slider. non-existent. Yeah. So you have to be impressed with his ability to throw the fastball, especially when it's up. Again, fouled straight back. Here's the three two. Up and away, walked him. Not close. Carbon copy of last inning. Although the first two outs by Davis, but McGee has done what Davis did. A couple of runners on, one of them touched the walk, then he walked the third guy. So base is loaded again. And it is Kurt Suzuki again. So the A's had him loaded in the ninth, could not win it. They got him loaded in the tenth. Wouldn't mind doing an interview with Kurt Suzuki. Love to. <laughs> Love to do an interview with anybody. That means the A's are going to win. First pitch, a fastball for a strike to Suzuki. For four RBI double for Suzuki. Goes after the high fastball, fouls it straight back, and it's 0 2. And the consistency of McGee, the high fastball. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one thing to throw the high the fastball, but also the consistency of being up. Outside, maybe off the plate, but definitely up. So, really, no chance for him to throw a wild pitch if everything is waste or above. At least so far. 30th pitch coming up. And Suzuki swings and misses on a fastball inside. And the A's for the second inning in a row leave them loaded. So, on to the 11th. It's a 3 3 game. In the second inning, when the A scored twice, Carter an RBI double. Two batters later, Kurt Suzuki with an RBI double. So the A's had a two to nothing lead. But then Carlos Pena with a two out, two run double in the top of the fourth. 
So that tied this game up at two apiece. Matt Joyce gave the Rays a lead with a solo home run in the sixth. If the A's would tie it. Two out solo home run by Brandon Hicks in the bottom of the seventh. So there you have it. That made it 3 3. And it's still 3 3. There's Mayor Kwan. Grant Balfour's in the game, so the right field folks doing their thing. All right. For the Rays, number two, B.J. Upton. So Grant Balfour comes in. It's the top of the 11th inning. So Ryan Cook goes two innings. Walks one, strikes out two. And it's B.J. Upton, Upton to lead it off. Upton, Zobrist, Keppinger here in the 11th. It's the former Ray, Grant Balfour, who pitched for the Rays before joining the A's last year. And I'd say they're very familiar with former right-hander. No secrets? Nope. This is like no secrets. To, well, especially the last pitcher for the Rays. The thing is, the Rays pitcher last two innings. Davis McGee throwing a lot of pitches. Yeah. You could not walk the tightrope more than the Rays did in the last two innings, but we're still playing. So one and two to BJ Upton, who is 0 for 4. Breaking ball from Bow 4. Tap to Balfour, he knocks it down, picks it up, guns it to first. <laughs> Upton is out. <laughs> that ball had gotten past Carter, one of the guys in the bullpen yeah, caught it. Or in the seat. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice play though. Oh, this ball headed up the middle, reached back, and considering where <laughs> Sogard was playing, I don't know that he would have gotten to it. Come on. <laughs> Stay in. <laughs> Stays in there, maybe he doesn't have to throw a 96 mile hour heater over to first. Squeeze it. <laughs> first pitch to Zobra is just a bit high. Zobrist has had some big hits against the A's over the years, so you to be careful. He's got 12 home runs. He's one for four tonight. Kappinger will be next. That one just a bit high. Think about Zobers, he's got a very good eye. He walks yeah, he a lot. This is a count though, three and one that he tries to get to to let it go. So a good fastball away would be the best thing. Good call. Perfectly placed. Probably going to try to do the same thing. Balfour, even though he has a good curveball, good slider, but his main pitch is fastball away. And he went away and he just ran off the plate. A one out base runner. A note about the stolen bases, Obris is a threat. Yeah. Now batting, number seven, Jeff Keppinger. He's got 12. Joe Madden, even though so nice we saw him with a hit and run with Rodriguez and Molina. Didn't work. Great throw by Suzuki to throw him out, but you never know what, can, uh, what Joe Madden is kind of unconventional. It's not played by the book. First pitch low to Keppinger.
Keppinger 0 for 4. Missed five hits for the race, seven hits for the Athletics. Each team has made an error. Howell and Rodney. Keppinger popped it up. Shallow right field. Weeks going out. And Jamal Weeks has it, and that's out number two. Like those fastballs inside, and hitter just cannot catch up to it. Good fastball from Grant Balfour. Kepiger, while he's a strong hitter, fastball up and zone. Probably seen more pitches. How many? Number 20. High strikes and high pitches tonight than we've seen in a long time. Yep. And you know, it's worked perfectly, and maybe the pitchers have been able to adjust because of the high strike zone. Of the home plate umpire. Could that be whether 25 <laughs> strikeouts <too? laughs> probably 17 strikeouts by A's hitters, eight strikeouts by Rays hitters. <laughs> Zobris decent lead. And there's a strike one on one to Matt Joyce. Weeks way out on the grass. Scary thing about this is the hole that's created on the left side with his shift and Balfour staying away with the fastball to left handers. Now Joyce pulled the ball over the right center field wall. A bit different this fastball. Two and one now to Joyce. That home run was in the sixth inning. It was his twelfth of the year. He also walked and scored in the fourth. One for three. And it's low now three and one. So Balfour has got to come in. That's Ryan Roberts. He'll be next. Inching off. The ball was tapped foul. So now it's a full count. And with two outs, Zobris will be moving. That always helps the offense a little bit. Timeout called by Kurt Suzuki. Not feel very deep. The lefty gets up, Jerry Blevins. We've seen Doolittle tonight. Runner goes, pitches, strike three, call right down around the knees. Or luck. Something like that. So Balfour <laughs> gets the strikeout. And we're moving on to the bottom of the 11th inning. Tied at three. Hasn't really called this all night, but perfect time for it to be called now.
to win the A's play. The Blue Jays, 7,500 kids, will receive an A's Jamal Wicks drawstring backpack. It is courtesy of Washington Hospital of Fremont. For more information and tickets, go to OaklandAthletics.com slash tickets. So you need your fleece blanket and your Jamal Wicks backpack. It can pack up and stay warm for a game like tonight. That just keeps going. They just keep getting the opportunities, and they get another one in this bottom half of the inning. So Smith to lead it off. The new pitcher is the left-hander, J.P. Howell. So Howell comes in. He's the fourth reliever. Not quite the velocity that the two previous relievers have been throwing. Three point two five is the ERA with a win for Howell. That hard slider that he shows. Smith is 0 for 3 with a walk. Eric Sogard will be next and then to the top of the order in weeks. It's high, three and one. Well, the Rays pitchers have been messing with danger the last two innings. They walked two in the ninth and they walked two in the tenth. And at some point, it's going to come back and cost you if you keep doing that. Well, you'd like to hope so. Six walks tonight, and they haven't had one score. So it would be nice to see if they do get a free pass to touch home plate. Payoff pitch to Smith. And he walked him with a slider outside. What a great take by Seth Smith. Boy, you get anxious, a little bit anxious, thinking three and two is going to throw me a fastball, but it's sometimes when the scouting report shows you that certain situations he might try to do this. And Seth Smith, another great at bat against a good lefty. And he takes the hard slider. So, a leadoff walk. Yep. So here's Sogard. This is his first at bat. So would you be thinking sacrifice? I'd say sure. maybe a good idea. He shows butt, pulls the bat back, and it's a strike. Corner infielders crashing hard. Roberts, the third baseman, Pena, the first baseman. Took that pitch because it was an off speed pitch. It wasn't the uh, good fastball that he thought he might be throwing to try to get, get the out. Throw the first. Now, even though that throw went to first and Sogard showed bunt, but I think everybody knows he's going to be bunting anyway. It's not like they're going to take it off, not. Have the sacrifice. Trying to get a runner in score position. Roberts comes crashing, and it's two Roberts. He's going to throw to second, and he makes a nice play. They get the out at second. Sogard is safe at first. So that's a nice play by Roberts. You can't hesitate, and he no. did not. So fielder's choice. Just hit hard in front of the plate and right up to the third base. Trying to turn a double play, no chance with Sogar and Speed, but Roberts has had a very busy night. So Jamal Weeks will 
hit from the right side. He is 0 for 5. Time for Jamal to get the first hit of the game. Fastball is high. So one and out a week. Waiting on deck. Johnny Gomes. Will it be his night against his former team? I don't think any of them care. They just like to win. So, guard is going to chase back to the bag. Week straight away. Shallow in right field is Joyce. And these lefties keep throwing to first base, and their move alone will keep the runner close to first and almost an unnecessary throw. Kind of a courtesy, as long as it's a lob and no chance of throwing away, that's one thing. Lefties are not getting very big leads. There's a strike to Jamal Weeks to even the count at one and one. Roberts, the third baseman, playing even with the bag. Pretty close to third base as well. Change up inside part of the plate. Got a good jump. He takes off, and it's a foul ball. And wow. he bad. had a great jump. But it's a right-handed hitter, less than two strikes, too. And that's something you you try to look and see the type of jump. I don't think it's a hit and run. He just went on first move. If it was a hit and run. Then contact was made. But what a jump! And by going on first move, no throw over. How it committed to throw to the plate and that enabled Sogar to get the jump he did. It's the foul ball yep. from Sogar from uh, Weeks. But if he did the ball to right field, it's first and third. <laughs> because second, right side was vacated. Completely open. We'll see what Sogar does. One and two. He's going to stay close this step. Good jump, throw to second base, not in time. So that time Weeks watched it be a ball. And that's a stolen base, and it's a big stolen base. A huge stolen base because A's only have what they try to do with Sobard. Bonnie high leg kick by Howe and Lobotan. A very strong, quick release, strong throw, just no chance with the high leg kick. And when Howe Goes to the plate. He has a tendency to lift the leg a little bit too much. So God read it. Surprising that he could go on first move again and be able to make it as easily as he did. Glad it happened. Big stolen base. So the A's will get a couple of shots. Now right field. Joyce moves in. Similar to what Jennings did. Wow, got that breaking ball. It just stays live. Two and two the count. There's no reason to load the bases. That's not worked the last two innings. No. no. 
All it does is have the pitcher throw a lot of pitches, change up, just kept sinking down and in. Zobris trying to keep Sogard close, but Sogard has a pretty good lead at second base. That's the one move. Buck Showalter said he'd like to see that move eliminated. Going to eliminate the fake to third, throw to first. The spin move, Ed, that will keep a runner close to second. Because you see the pitcher lift the front foot. I think he's going to be thrown to the plate, but he makes the spin move. He can pick the guy off. There's your winning run. Not close, and it's a full count. J.P. Howell looking at weeks he sees his old teammate Johnny Gomes waiting in the on deck circle. That one bounced toward Roberts at third, and he throws to first just in time to get weeks, and that's out number two. Might have been ball four, but too close to take. Roberts again involved in the play. Low back. All Jamal Weeks could do is hit it in the ground as Roberts looked the runner back. So you'd have to figure Josh Reddick, very good hitter. Johnny Gomes, right handed, first base open. The manager is the one that makes the decision. Yeah. Do you walk him, pitch him carefully, take a chance lefty on lefty in the on deck circle with Reddick? Do you try to let your former player beat you? They're going to pitch to him. Gomes is one for five. He let off the tenth inning with the infield single. First pitch is high. Lobaton went out to talk to his pitcher, and a couple of infielders came in. It, without Jim Hickey or Joe Madden going out, it could have been first base is open. You don't have to give in to him. Maybe try to get him to hit your pitch. Johnny Gomes, type of hitter, would expand the strike zone. There. Which is high again. Levins has been throwing in the A's bullpen for a while. That one dropped in for a strike. Looks like maybe a changeup. Yeah, he's he's got a good changeup. Yeah. He's not afraid to throw it any time. Johnny looked at it, similar to Jamai Wicks. All he could have done is beat this one to the ground. So two and one the count to Gomes. Scampering back is so good. Rays with seven hits in the game. Rays with just five. That one's inside, and it's three and one. Again, Reddick is the on deck hitter. Reddick is 0 for 5, so he's trying to get a chance to win it. And they're going to pitch to Johnny. Remember the 2 0 change up for strike? Let's see if Johnny sits change up. Because you figure if he's not going to be worried about walking him, will he try to get him to chase a change up? Let's see if Johnny sits on him. Ball that 
stays inside, so Gomes walks. And that'll bring up Reddick. Josh Reddick got his to left center. And that was his walk off, and that was the throwback, the Oakland Oaks uniforms. And yes, he got it. He said, I can dish it out and I can take it. And he did. Against the Seattle Mariners on the Sunday afternoon. Cologne against Felix Hernandez. Now batting. Right fielder. So here is Reddick. Joe Peralta pitched an inning. He didn't walk anybody. Guess what the other four guys for the Rays have done tonight. Well, two walks in the ninth, yeah. two walks in the tenth, two walks right. in the eleventh. I mean, at some point, yeah. the A's have to make them pay for that. And still, eight walks, not one has scored. Something that helped the A's on the road in Toronto and Baltimore. Drawing walks, scoring the walks. Tonight, not the case. Come out. First pitch to Reddick. And he fists it foul. High fastball. Couple of hits and a couple of at bats. So 21 pitches for Howe. Well, you said it right, Ray. The relievers for the A's, or for the Rays, have thrown a lot of pitches. One pitch is high. Now that doesn't necessarily mean anything tonight, but it means something for the rest of the series. 93 pitches thrown by the Rays relievers. Add that to the 121 thrown by the starter David Price. He was still throwing 97. Pitch number 121. Breaky ball and it's high strike. Wasn't looking for it, and why swing at it? Change now with two strikes, and watch the breaking pitch come in. So one and two to Reddick. And he got him swinging. Went right back to the breaking ball. So Reddick, 0 for 6 with four strikeouts, and we are moving on to the 12th. Opportunities for the A's all over the board in the late innings. They just have not got that hit. So we're still playing baseball. Grant Balfour stays out there. Pitch the 11th inning and a walk and a strikeout. He'll face Roberts. After Roberts, it's Pena and Fultz. So a couple of left handed hitters coming up after Roberts. Josh Reddick, not a happy camper right now.
How many strikeouts now? No, I don't want to know. Like that's okay. Time. That's okay. It's more than 17 and less than 19. <laughs> and combine the nine. Nine for the race. Right. 27 strikeouts in this game. First pitch to Roberts. Fastball high. How many times have I said that? Fastball high. Uh, uh, <laughs> all night. <laughs> it's 1104. Yeah. Game started 707. Roberts tried to give the Rays the lead with that swing. One and one to count. I mentioned Roberts has been a very busy man tonight, especially at third base. Didn't particularly want him coming up last inning with a runner in scoring position. He has grounded out, struck out, flied out, and then he walked with two outs in the top of the ninth, stole the base, but was stranded at second. Good pitch there by Balfour. Balfour is throwing 23 pitches now. Didn't miss by much. Full count. So certainly leads you to believe that Blevins will come in to face Pena. That one's hit high on the infield. Jamiah Weeks is under it. And he's got it. So that's out number one here in the 12th inning. And here comes the manager. So Grant Balfour does his job. And Blevins is coming in. Struck out, swinging to end the 11th. That gives the A's 18 strikeouts on the night. What does that tell you? Probably the fifth time in Oakland history they've done that. It's the fifth time in Oakland history they've done that. <laughs> 19 is the record. Ray, you remember that, huh? Randy Johnson? That's right. I do remember that. So Blevins to face Pena lefty on lefty with another lefty Sam fold in the on deck circle. First pitch is a strike to Carlos Pena. But it's a high, high strike. <laughs> <laughs> Even relievers so far down and they can't see what's going on. They've seen the high strike called by. Angel Fernandez. Slider. Swing and a miss by Pena. So it's 0 2. Well, this pitch has to end up away from the lefty. 
strong as Carlos Pena is, you don't want to give him a chance with a hanger. A hanging curveball. Single up double tonight and two strikeouts for Pena. Swing and a miss, he got it. Kept it away, and that's another strikeout. So two outs here in the 12th. Great fastball. Suzuki way off the plate. Might have been off the plate with the pitch, and Carlos Pena swinging at it. Now that Big strikeout. Number five. It's about it with the power that Pena has. Get him swinging and missing, then that's that's a good one. So here's Fold. Second at bat for Fold. He pinch hit in the tenth inning. And he lined out to inch. It's Burke Baden hop. There's a strike. Levins is the fourth reliever the A's have used. Bounce toward Carter. He's got it. Steps on the bag. Levins does his job, and we're headed to the bottom of the 12th. Tied at three. And it's a 3-3 game. Cespedes is going to lead it off. And he's going to face a new hitter. Or a new pitcher, I should say. It's going to be Burke Badenhop. So when it's time for change, think speedy oil change in tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and smog experts. So Badenhop to face Cespedes, Carter, and Inch. Leading off the bottom of the 12th inning for the Athletics. Low 90s fastball for the right hander. Slider and change up. So you're going to see just the little differences. A couple of lefties following. Well, it's been lefty, righty, righty, lefty, lefty, righty tonight for the Tampa Bay Rays. Just ended Cespedes. Just like he did against the Dodgers. Yep, I agree. That was a three run. Don't need a three run home run. Just one. Home run. And now his first pitch he is a bit high. Cespedes is two for five. A couple of singles. He scored a run way back in the second inning. That one's low. So two and oh. That are sticking around. They're doing everything they can. Oh, 
Getting up, dropped down a little bit. Got a strike. That one, he did the same thing, and it's two and two. That's what it's looking back. Looked like he might have slipped as he took his stride. Very awkward swing. And front foot kind of turned a little bit. Back foot came off the ground. Get all kinds of traction, much as you can get. 2 2 pitch, swing and a miss. It was kind of a slider that kind of spun up there, didn't probably go where Bad Knob wanted it. But he got another strikeout. Backup slider or a front door slider where it stayed on the inside part of the plate, fooling Cespedes as he was thinking, bitch away. It might have been concerned about his foot slipping again. No, the first pitch to Carter is a strike. So the race set a record tonight. Their pitchers. The 19 strikeouts. Franchise record for them. One and one to Chris Carter. Carter has doubled, walked three times, and struck out. Close to one more. Big chopper, George Short, Elliot Johnson. It's his first action. Carter is retired, and that's two outs. These have had just one hit since the Hicks home run, and that was in the seventh inning. Now they have had plenty of base runners thanks to all the walks. So here's Inge. Strike on the outside corner. Inge is 0 for 4. Four strikeouts and a walk. These have also received eight walks tonight. A line drive past the diving Roberts. So Inge stays at first. And it's a two out single. And it'll get Kurt Suzuki in that back. Walked his last at bat after striking out the first four. And Roberts might have been playing no doubles. The ball just to his left. He was close to the line, took another step towards the foul line and could not reach back. So Suzuki steps in for his sixth at bat. He's one for five. That two for five. A sinker that drops in for strike. Shortstop Johnson will go across the diamond a little bit low Pena has it side retired. We are headed to the 13th inning still tied at three.
Now join us tomorrow on Comcast Sportsnet California. The A's will continue this three-game set against the Rays. Tommy Malone and James Shields is your matchup. 6.30, it's A's pregame live, and then the ball game a little after 7. And remember, you get complete A's coverage every night on Sportsnet Central and CSNCalifornia.com. So that's tomorrow night. If we keep going at the rate we're going, it's going to be just later today. <laughs> Trading deadline to be over before we leave. That's right. So, Jerry Blevins pitched the 12th, pitched the last two batters, 12th, I should say. So, Hill will face Jose Lobaton, switch hitter, his second at bat. He's the catcher. Top of the 13th inning. Levin's first pitch is down and away. A's bullpen giving up just a couple of walks from the eighth inning through the twelfth. As you mentioned, the game for the bullpens and both bullpens have done a great job, even though the A's have had a few more opportunities against the Rays, but they've not been able to capitalize. That one bounced foul. Well, we talk a lot about the walk offs, which are great, but generally the bullpen does a great job yeah. to help you get the walk off or get to the walk off. And we've seen that a lot with the A's this year. And we're seeing it again tonight. Griffin went seven. So, might have been. so far, five innings yeah. from the bullpen. That might have been the best move by the A's to let Griffin pitch the seventh, because normally been pitching six. Doolittle was getting loose. He went back to the seventh and had a good one. A little pop up. Reddick coming in toward the line. He's got it. And that's out number one. In fact, Dre, the Rays have not had a hit since the seventh inning. How about eight? That's when they had two. Nine, <laughs> eight, That's right. Johnson. The back to back, both of them thrown out on the bases. So five innings. Five, the last five innings, no hits for the Rays. This is Elliot Johnson, who is now. Has been in the game at shortstop the last couple innings. He's a switch hitter. Looks to bunt again, takes a strike. On deck is BJ Upton. This is the leadoff spot in the Rays lineup. Every half for a while, the last, last three or four innings, it seemed like pitchers throwing, bullpen active. Now, all of a sudden, neither bullpen has someone throwing. Reddick spinning around, backpedaling. He's got it. Out number two. So that bring up BJ Upton. Yeah, you think about the A's. The Rays. Rays were in Southern Number California, two, so they played over the weekend in the Pacific time zone. The A's were back on the East Coast. So arriving a little bit earlier than this time last night, they're still on East Coast time zone in a sense. So it's it's a late night for the boys. But they get acclimated very quickly to the new time zone. They have to even play as well as they have tonight. Swing and a miss by Upton. Change up and it's 0 and 2. Upton is 0 for 5. Swing and a miss right by Upton with a fastball. Upton hurls his bat. 
So he's 0 for 6, and it's a 3 up, 3 down inning. Bottom of the 13th coming up. So Seth Smith's going to lead it off. But that one shot right there just made it for the mayor. You know, here we are in the 13th inning and shot of the mayor, and she's still there. Batten hops first pitch is a strike. So Burke Batten hop. Second inning of work. Gave up a hit and had a strikeout in the 12th inning. The two relievers that are left for the Rays are Kyle Farnsworth and their closer Fernando Rodney. For the A's they still have Noberto Miller and Scribner. Field fold on the move. Now he's under it. He's got it. So one out here in the top of the 13th. Sogard's going to hit. Now batting number 28, Eric Sogard. This is Sogard's second at bat. He reached out a fielder's choice and then stole the bag in the 11th inning. He was one of the three base runners stranded in that. Pitches a bit outside to Sogard. Grounded. Jordan Elliott Johnson who ranges to his left flips it to first and that's out number two. So Jamal Weeks has hit two home runs at the beginning of the season. Now batting second base number 19. So he's not thinking about that. He's thinking about Weeks. get on base, steal a base, yeah. score the winning run. You got to be creative and. Chance for Jamal to use his wheels, his legs, if he can get on base. Extra inning, seventh plate appearance for the A's second baseman. 0 for 6. Three ground outs, a fly out, and two strikeouts. Porter's here. <laughs> Could that be former Raider wide receiver Joey Porter's jersey? Could be. Look like it. A credit to those people who are still here. Boy, boy, Started out with 12,564 on hand. 
Two and one now to Weeks. If Weeks could get on, Johnny Gomes would hit. Weeks got a pitch. Kind of floated out over the middle of the plate. He fouled it back. Two and two the count. Closing in on a four and a half hour game. Two two pitch. And that's line, but just foul. Well, speed pitch that. Stayed on the outside corner. Hey, the A's want to welcome George Kataris tonight. <laughs> Four and a half hours. <laughs> having fun, George? <laughs> First game with the Oakland A's. Setting up outside. Yeah, that one came back inside and rolled foul. See where the Seattle Mariners traded Brandon League to the Los Angeles Dodgers. So that was not a surprise that they traded him. It was just a matter of who a lot of teams liked him. So Brandon League going to the National League for the first time. Plus upon it, plus in the win column for Yeah, him. that's true. <laughs> Sam Fold is under it. He's got it, and Jamal Weeks is 0 for 7, and we're moving to the 14th inning, tied at 3. Three five and one for the Rays. Three eight and one for the Athletics. So Blevins will go to work again. He's pitched an inning in two thirds. He has not thrown a lot of pitches. Only 18 pitches. He'll face Zobrist, Keppinger, and then Matt Joyce. So it's the three four five hitters for the Rays. It's amazing the A's have been as. Efficient as they have in the bullpen, just using four relievers. About four, an inning in the third, and Cook went two. So that's really the thing that has helped yeah. them out. Zobris with a line drive, and that's a base hit to left field. So the Rays have a leadoff runner aboard. Change up, it stayed up a little bit for Zobris. Just reached out and hooked it in the left field. So that is just the sixth hit. And the first hit since the seventh inning for the Rays. 
Uh, they really have had very few base runners, just a couple of walks since the seventh inning, so they have to feel pretty good about getting a leadoff runner aboard. And a pretty good hitter here as far as handling the bat. Remaining players, we mentioned the pitchers. Brooks Conrad, a switch hitter, is the only bench player for the Rays. Guitarist and Coco Crisp for the Athletics. I have to wonder if Coco's available. He's got a little tightness in the hamstring. One and zero to Kepinger. Two and zero to Kepinger, who is. 0 for 5, but he reached out a fielder's choice and scored a run in the fourth inning. Sprays the ball around, though. And now 3 0. So Blevins is working himself into some trouble. Joyce on deck. After Joyce, it would be Ryan Roberts. So Jordan Aberto just now getting up and he's going to start to throw out in the A's bullpen. Second time tonight we've seen a pitcher. Brooks Conrad gets loose, but a pitcher throwing to first base on a 3 0 count. So now three and one. Zobrist so with a decent lead. Kepinger popped it up. Suzuki's coming back. Still coming back, and it's just out of his reach. Right in that walk, baby, walkway between the dugout, heads up to the clubhouse. Now, an interesting call again with a left handed pitcher, Zobris, good base runner, good speed. It's Kepinger, the type of hitter tonight. He's hit one ball on the ground. That was a, a very good play by Brandon Inch way back in the fourth inning. So 3 2. See if Zobrist runs. He does not. And Kepinger bounces one into left field. Zobrist is going to take a big turn. He'll stop at second. So there was a big hole there. And Kepinger found it. Ball was really not hit very hard. Now Zobrist was actually going back towards first base. And the high fastball oh, went up and got it. And look where the shortstop, Sogard, is playing. They're bunching up the middle. Brooks Conrad is going to pinch hit. Conrad is a switch hitter, so they want Conrad to hit right handed. Curious what Joyce is hitting against left handers. It must not be very good. 239. your fifth place hitter but Conrad is going to hit your attention please ladies and gentlemen batting for Joyce number 36 Brooks Conrad so Conrad to hit here in the 14th inning with runners at first and second and nobody out Roberts will be next here you figured he's going to be bunning Think anyway, although another big hole on the left side. Enough to tell if he was showing bunt or not. I think he started to kind of turn around from the right side, right side of his body, turned around and then dropped the bat. Not bunting, and he swings and misses, and it was a big swing, and he pulled off. It have to one to two if not a sacrifice. Matt Joyce might have stayed in the game. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, lefty it's, on that, lefty. even though if he doesn't hit lefties and. And maybe Joe Madden was giving him one chance. Let's see on this one, Brandon Andrews, with a huge hole. He tried to pull it because of the hole on the left side. Swing and a miss. And Brooks Conrad is hitting 182 against left-handed pitching. Well, he's throwing a sinker. He's not going to hit it. And that'd be best case scenario it's for him to strike out on that pitch instead of maybe taking advantage of the hole on the left side of the infield. And even with the bag, but close to the bag, now starts to back up. It's still a huge hole on the left side. Almost makes you think there's something wrong with Matt Jordan. Well, yeah. But it, look at Joe Madden's thinking maybe if this spot in the batting order bunted successfully, walk Roberts and then it's lefty facing Pena and Fold. Lefty lefty. So maybe he didn't want that situation. But uh, you think a couple of guys on base that could sacrifice. See what happens. To Conrad takes a very close pitch, a fastball that was just a touch outside, so the count is even at two and two. Same pitch he swung at twice. Wow. I guess there's no black on the plate. It's just 17 all white. Takes strike three right at the knees. Great slider. Changed it up. A couple of sinkers for swing and misses. Missed with the fastballs and then slider started, pulled the hit bat back, and Angel Hernandez just couldn't wait to ring him up. As he's been doing quite a bit tonight. <laughs> so Conrad pitch hitting for Joyce. Number 19. Strikes out looking. Ryan Roberts. Here's Roberts. Roberts does not have a hit. Zoberst at second, Keppinger at first. Not close, one and oh. As Ray said, Carlos Pena is in the on deck circle. Setting up inside to right field. Reddick moving over to his left. He's got it. And tagging up is Zobris. The throw to third is just a bit late. So Zobris gets to third, but now there are two outs. So a big out there. A great big strong throw by Josh Reddick. Very tough to throw out Zobris, considering the depth of this fly ball. The only key there, the biggest thing is he caught it. That was the only question. When he tries to throw somebody out, maybe there's an impossibility. Now, I want to make sure he catches the ball first, and he reached up and just not like to see the quickness in grabbing for the ball, but he handled it well. So here's Pena. This big shift on wow. the infield. That's huge. Hope he doesn't bunt. <laughs> and that's why Inge is playing where he's playing, but first pitch to Carlos Pena. Slider down and in, or down and away, I should say. One and zero. Now that's a shift. That's a shift. Uh, that, that's an exaggerated. When you have the shortstop in the second base position. Whew. Hit very high. 
right field. So Blevins is going to get out of it, and we're going to the bottom of the 14th. We're tied at three. Bottom of the 14th inning, folks. That's right, bottom of the 14th inning. So the Rays are going to go back to the bullpen. Fernando Rodney, when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and spa experts. So here's Fernando Rodney. He's having a sensational season. 30 for 31 in save opportunities. The ERA 0.77. So Fernando Rodney takes over for Johnny Gomes to face Johnny Gomes. Still trying to figure out why Joe Bad would not bunt in the top of the season. I agree. I mean, it, it, I agree. As we always say, there's always a reason. Managers always do things for a reason. But I. I yeah. I just cannot figure out how you would not bunt there. Next next guy hits a fly ball. But even if, like you said, you walk. Brian Roberts. Yeah. I don't know. Brian Roberts. I mean, you load the bases and take a chance with a couple of left. Sure. And that's, yeah, I, I don't know. I'd love to know. We thank him for that. Well, of course, Conrad goes up. Well, he doesn't make a lot of contact. And he didn't there. And he didn't show bunt. No. So Zobris now in right, and Conrad stays in the game at second base. And Rod did a great palm ball, which great change up. Brooks Conrad, second base. So he was with the Braves. Yes, he was. Let's see, was he? Helped the Giants win the World I Series, I believe. Said, I thought that was the. Yeah. I don't know that they gave him a share, but he certainly helped him. <laughs> you mean the Giants? Helped him get there. <laughs> One and two to Gomes. Makes it a tough Fernando Rodney. It's that fastball at 97 miles an hour. And he pulls the string also, uh -huh. so you can imagine differential. Good take there by Johnny Gomes. That's a tough pitch to lay off of. So three and two. Reddick on deck and then Cespedes. So it's a good part of the order for the Athletics. That is a great take after a 97 fastball and then comes back with a palm ball.
three two and he came back with it on three two and I guess you're just not expecting that as a hit. So. And he throws it in hopes that although this was a strike anyway it hopes that the hitter swinging and missing. But see him wrap his hand around and throw the palm ball and a good one. So that is. Strikeout number 20, and that's a new A's franchise record. First pitch to Reddick is a strike. Four of those strikeouts belong to Josh Reddick. It could all be forgotten with one swing of the bat. Fastball way inside, 98 miles an hour. So Kyle Farnsworth is the only Rays reliever left. And if Rodney's the closer and he gets one inning, he figured Joe Man, forget about the closer. Farnsworth capable of closing. Yeah. If that is the case, otherwise it would be I think Rodney for one inning. Boy. Depending on the pitches, closers normally don't pitch more than one, although Ryan Cook. Pitch two tonight, but he hadn't worked in a while. And you, sir, I mean, listen, your closer is usually your, usually your best reliever. You, you'd like to get him in the game if you can. So here's Cespedes. Cespedes, two for six. Pitch is a fastball inside, a single in the second, and a single in the sixth. Amazing what Rodney has done for the Rays that he couldn't do and didn't do with the Angels. Yeah. Great with the Tigers. Also great with the Angels. And been superb with Tampa Bay. Well, a bargain. You think about how much closers make now. I mean, it's become a high paying position, but. Rodney signed a one year two million dollar deal. Yeah. That's that's one of the best if not the best free agent signing of the offseason. If you look at the amount of money in the left field the base hit for Cespedes past a diving Roberts. He was hugging the line and that helped Cespedes get it through. So hit number nine for the athletics and so many times you'll see a, an infielder third first baseman guarded the line against an extra base hit. See so many singles just to the left in this case the diving. Roberts couldn't come up with it but I guess you could say saved a double unless Cespedes is still second then it is double. So it's Chris Carter. So the outfield now moves way back. There's the ball ball and it's outside to Carter. Carter is one for three. RBI double and he has walked three times. There's a the strike. One of those tough calls. Obviously, Carter, lots of power. You're also up against one of the better closers. And I guess my thought is a hard guy to get three hits off of in a row. That's right. I agree. That's why I thought Cespedes single me. Maybe least think about taking it. Doesn't mean it can't be done, but. One and two the count to Carter. Cespedes. Not going. And that one's popped up. And that will reach the seats. So we have not seen a run scored since the seventh inning. That's when Brandon Hicks homered to tie it. And there's Brandon. There's. Fortunately, he did because this thing would have been over a long time ago. 
David Price would have had a win. Carter tries to hold up, and he does. So close call, and Carter's going to get to swing the bat one more time. Change up again, the palm ball again, and held up. But they have to figure. They'd be surprised if he gets any kind of a fastball to hit. Rodney's too good of a pitcher, too much confidence to throw his change up in time. Suspendus runs and the ball bounced foul. So indeed he threw it again. And Cespedes, as he continues to run left field, had second stolen, but two strikes on the hitter. Carter had to try to make contact. And if Cespedes is running and there's a ball towards the gap, the doubles defense will not help. It's as deep as the no, outfield is playing right. doubles. And even Assessment of speed, if the ball is hit towards the gap, may not help anyone. Assessment is not running this time, and we got a full count. Ray, that was pitch number 262 thrown by the Rays. Wow, this guy's still pitching with 220. So you figure the A's have, I mean, not thrown quite that many, but. Probably somewhere between 450 and 500 pitches thrown. So give Angel Hernandez some credit. And they're going to hold Cespedes, even though he's going to be running on three and two. Takes off. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. It's coming. So two more strikeouts for the Rays. 21 times the A's have struck out tonight. Norberto's coming in. We're tied at three. These are working hard. Three to three. Top of the 15th inning. Jordan Alberto comes in. So Jerry Blevins goes two and a third innings. So Alberto becomes the fifth reliever used. It's now Scribner and Miller. That's who's left. So Sam Fold will lead it off. Fold. Right back to Naberto, and thank you very much. One pitch, <laughs> one out on the bunt attempt. He almost ran in too hard and <laughs> to catch the ball. And there's always a thought you run in too hard, it gets past your momentum carrying forward, is fold out of the box, and Naberto, good job charging, catching the air, continue past home plate. Now, buddy, number 21, Jose Lobaton. Here's Jose Lobaton, his third at bat after coming in the game in the 10th. He flips on the right field. Reddick is going to have to play it on a hop. So Lobaton goes after the first pitch, and he's got a one out single. Well, we have hit Tuesday, folks. 
July 31st. There's a young fan so happy because that fan said never been up past midnight. <laughs> he said I am absolutely now staying Benny? at this game until midnight. Elliot Johnson. Well, we're losing a few fans each inning that passes by. <laughs> Down and into Elliot Johnson. Kyle Farnsworth is warming up. It looks like Fernando Rodney, the closer, is going to go just the one inning. Way inside. Elliot Johnson came in the game to play shortstop. This is his second at bat. He had a fly ball to right field in the 13th inning. BJ Upton. Is in the on deck circle. And now three and zero. Oh. Man, that one's not close, and that's a walk to Johnson. And now, really, the Rays' best hitters are coming up. And unfortunately, not one of the four pitches to Johnson. It's close. And Kurt, Kurt Young's going to visit. So, really, six pitches, one a bunt for an out, an extra base hit, and then four out of the strike zone. And now you face Upton, who is 0 for 6. Remember the longest game you played in? How about it? Yes, Number I do. Two, How long was it? 23 innings. I think you've told me that. Yeah. With the Indians or with the Athletics? Well, it was in the farm system. It was oh, okay. League, but it's okay. still 23 innings, and I caught all 23. <laughs> <laughs> it was Lodi, California. So you were just getting loose at this point. It's only the 15th yeah, inning. Yeah, yeah, right. First pitch to Upton is high. So to Berto. Needs to find the strike zone. Ben Zobris, the switch hitter, is in the on deck circle. That's when we started games at 8 o'clock. <laughs> finished at 2 in the morning. Fastball right by Upton. Ray Miller, manager of the Twins and the Orioles pitching coach, yep. pitched a no hitter. He came in in the 11th, <laughs> pitched a no hitter, in nine innings, in, out of the bullpen. There wasn't anything open to get anything to eat after no, the game either. Not. <laughs> and the clubhouses didn't have any food. So you didn't have a nice spread at the <laughs> end in the California League? <laughs> no. <laughs> Popped up. Chris Carter is got it. And Upton is 0 for 7. That's a big out. One more to get. Very big out. Tough hitter coming up in Zobrist to, as a switch hitter. Ben Zobrist. It's good from the both sides. The changeup off Jerry Blevins for a base hit to start last inning that he was stranded. Got the third on the fly ball, but Blevins with a strikeout, a couple of fly balls to right field. Lobaton is the go-ahead run at second. Bit outside. So Zobrist, two singles and a walk. Jamal Weeks trying to keep close at second as best he can. Not a bad time just to forget about the runner at second and hold the position so don't have a ball hit. In the vicinity of your positioning at second, not be able to get to it. Right there for a strike, good pitch down around the knees, and the count is two and one to Zobrist. Pop up 
foul. A good pitch by Roberto jams Obris. Roberto sets and the 2-2 pitch. Ground ball toward Weeks. He's got it. And that'll do it. So the Rays strand two, bottom of the 15th, coming up, tied at three. Gonna walk off. They'll do it against a different pitcher. It's Kyle Farnsworth, the big right hander. So Farnsworth making just his 11th appearance. Seen a lot of Kyle Farnsworth over the years. Still throws hard when he's healthy. And he has been around the league. He's always thrown hard. So Farnsworth, he's the last pitcher. So the Rays do not have any more relievers, and they've used all their position players. The A's, as far as rosters go, in a, in a little better shape. Jeff Keppinger has gone down to the bullpen to start throwing. Uh, and that's then you got to find somebody to play his position. With the DH. He's a DH. Can oh, he's a DH. DH. That's yeah. right. So, That's so right. They, I'm sorry. That right. is the American League can use the DH. So that is one thing that helps. He's would like to end it here, though. Inch big swing and a miss. One and one the count. That's a pitch that Farnsworth throws. You have to lay off because he does throw it well. Inch has a walk and a base hit. Fouls that straight back. Farnsworth has only made 10 appearances because he was yeah. on the disabled list for most of the year in a right elbow strain. He was activated on June 30th. And with that in mind, Joe Madden with Keppinger warming up. I have to think Farnsworth maybe on a pitch count or at the most pitch this inning. And he's protecting him. I think Joe and Jim Hickey would just forget about. There's a base hit to right field. Broken bat single for in. So a good start for the A's in the bottom of the 15th. So Inge with a couple of hits tonight, and that'll bring up Kurt Suzuki. A very good hitting with the fastball away. It didn't pull off, stayed on it, and went the opposite field. So good job. Kurt Suzuki. So here's Suzuki. Suzuki. A double in the second. And a single in the ninth. Two for six. 
Kirk to bunt. Bunts it back to Farnsworth, who thought about second. Now he's going to flip to first and get the out there. If it's thrown to second, it had it. I think he just had it in his mind. He was going to go to first. So Seth Smith will come up to the plate with the winning run at second base. Dear Dick Callahan's public address announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, the last BART train leaves at 1220. I don't think I've ever heard him announce that. <laughs> but either. It's 1210. You better hurry That's up. That's it. <laughs> yeah, they're going. <laughs> we, we can't. You got nine minutes. <laughs> We're going to walk Smith face Sogar. It's the ninth walk issue. So Sogard will have a chance after Sogard, it'll be weeks. So Smith will trot to first. Right now, he's not the base runner that means anything. It's in Jet second base. I mean, Kurt Suzuki bonding with the runner first base. It wasn't because it's whatever inning, 15th, 16th, 15th inning. Because just get him under score position. Yeah. Again, we'll think what, and, and the other thing I can think of with Joe Madden is that he had a couple of lefties coming up, but man, the infield would have come in, and who knows. But anyway, yeah. the A's are trying to win it with Sogar. First pitch to Sogard is a stride. Third at bat for Sogard, reached out a fielder's choice in the 11th and grounded out in the 13th. <laughs> Fouled straight back by Sogar. Got an off speed pitch that was a little bit up. So Farnsworth is the last reliever for the Rays. I think if you're the manager, you Hard not to think about tomorrow's game with your bullpen. Especially if you've used up all your guys tonight. The managers also think about tonight yeah. being the most important game, or in this case, tomorrow, yeah. right now, even though today's game, last night's game, tomorrow, whatever. It's not today's game. Yeah. <laughs> But it's a new day. See you later. That hit Sogard. No, it did not. Oh, wow. I guess not. He, he would have reacted a little differently. Could be hopping all over the place. Absolutely. Fall down. Grab your foot. Had to miss it anyway. It did hit it, didn't it? Looked like. Let's see. No, right, right in between. between. That first shot from center field looked like he hit his. Front foot, but did bounce in between. I'm just thinking, you down there, you're still eating. <laughs> two, two pitch is low. You take three and two. You know, if you're at if you're a Rays fan and you're at home watching, getting ready to have breakfast. It's 3:14 in the morning. Hinge ready to go. 3 2 pitch to Sogard, and he walked him. The bases are loaded. Again. Well, it is time for Jamal Weeks. That's a great at bat, by the way, considering he started 0 2. Jamal Weeks up. Back in the 
ninth inning with the bases loaded. Called out on strike three. Uh, Joe Madden's going to decide how many infielders he's going to have. Maybe bring an outfielder in. Play the other two shallow. So strategy time. Uh, Zobrist is yeah. going to get a different glove, so that's the obvious choice to come into the infield. We'll just see where he positions himself. We usually put two on the left side, one kind of up the middle or offset, two on the right side. And the two outfielders will play shallow in left field and in this case right center. David Price, starting pitcher tonight, still on the bench cheering for his teammates. And he takes the fielder's glove out to Ben Zobrist. So Zobrist is going to play right in front of second base. Well, just a shade now to the right side of second base. So that's your lineup. There's nobody in right field. Right field is wide open. So Farnsworth's first pitch to Weeks is hit high. Upton setting up. Inch tagging, medium right center. Here's the throw to the plate, and it's late, and the A's are going to walk off again. It just took a little bit longer this time. 15 innings, A's win it, four to three. And guess who got the first walk off? And makes it number 12. The 11th different player, Jamal Weeks, gets another opportunity, and this time he comes through. It's all the muscles. It's all the muscles. Just Wow. Well, it is amazing. And there's no way that Mike Gallego was not going to send Brandon Inch. We had a very good opposite field hit to start the 15th. Very strong arm by Upton. It was a strong arm, a strong throw. And Lobaton up the line just enough. Brandon Inch. Avoiding the tag and slid around Loberton. 494 pitches. Thank you. <laughs> and the 494, perfect for the A's. As Brandon in scores at about 12 16 a.m. on Tuesday. So it was the eighth at bat of the night for yep. Jamal Weeks. Did not have a hit, but it doesn't matter because he wins it with a sacrifice fly in the bottom of the 15th inning. So the A's win it, and Jamal is standing by downstairs. Jamal, have you ever played in a game like this at any level? No, nah, this was uh, this was too long right here. <laughs> Apologize to the fans for the wait. Uh, we had a lot of opportunities. Uh, we failed a few times, but you know this team never dies, man. We came out here and got it done. Don't ever apologize as long as you win. That's the most important thing. Now, yeah. you, you're you an infielder. You come up to plate, bases loaded. An infielder comes in. You got five infielders. Look out. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, well. That was a good interview for a while. <laughs> so we'll see if we can get Jamal hooked up again but indeed I think I know what you're saying it has to be a bit strange yeah, yeah. standing in the box certainly the game is on the line a lot of pressure and then you look out and when you see five infielders you're so used to seeing four so I gotta believe that's a little strange yeah. well Jamayo as he was walking off he was flexing his muscles showing I've got power well the one thing you want to do if you have five infielders is to on the air sure. if there are only two outfielders and Farnsworth is not an easy guy to pull, yet Jamal looked like he tried and successfully got out in front and pulled it enough to the center field of playing in right center and, and all the things that happened. But it wasn't surprising to see Joe Madden, the manager, maneuver around, put five infielders in. You see Mike Socha, a lot of guys were doing, hoping for a ground ball to get the force at the plate. It just didn't happen, fortunately for the A's. 
they were able to uh, to score the run and end it. And I guess stick around, come in on Monday, stay on Tuesday, stick at the pie. And you know, we said that at some point the walks are going to come back yeah. and hurt the race and help the A's, and they finally did. It was an intentional walk to Seth Smith, which was fine, but then uh, the walk to Sogard, which was a good at bat. Then the bases are loaded, and then the A's are in business. So really, the walks finally caught up with the race pitchers. And you figure they should eventually, but unfortunately, there were times that the A's had the walks. With two outs, they start the inning with a couple outs, then load the bases, and at that point, it took a two-out hit that the A's didn't get. Jamal Weeks had one of those in the ninth, comes up in the fifteenth. The same bases loaded this time, and gets it done. So Ray, you know you're going good when you strike out 21 times in a game. Doesn't matter, you still win the game. So it took 15 innings tonight at the Coliseum. We should not be surprised that the A's hung in there and won the game. Can't wait till tonight. We'll see a second tonight. game of the series. All right, so 4-3 is your final. The A's win it in 15 innings here at the Coliseum. You've been watching A's Baseball. It's on Comcast Sports Net, part of the NBC Sports Group. Don't go away. A's Post Game Live with Dave Brenz and Craig Cattaray starts right now.